Hello and welcome to another episode of Hedgehog Mix. My name is Austin, aka Zombie Hedgehog, and today we're going to continue the continuation of the continuously evolving Roron 2.4 build, thanks to West3D, Poly Polymaker, LDO, and everyone else who has helped support this channel, this printer, and just being here. So, that being said, and with an inconsistent intro every single time, why don't we explain where we left off? So, uh, last time we were starting on the X gantry and we realized we didn't have the, the whatever the heck these parts are. <laughs> the X pieces, we didn't have them printed. So, they're printed now. As well as a, a lot of stuff I forgot actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we had the, a lot of the self burner components to print. Hopefully we have enough of that. I can get my printer preheated just in case. I'm not expecting to get the belt done today, but I want to make as much progress as possible. I at least have the belt mount so we can run our belts and get that mounted. We also got in... Oh yeah, panels! So we can finish the, the bottom part. And then eventually... I'm not too worried about the side panels for now. I'm not going to be printing ABS on this right away. We're going to be testing in PLA like I, I would I would typically do. But uh, yeah, bottom panels. That's very exciting. Eventually, I will have the rear laser engraved once I decide which. Um, I'm trying to figure out a logo font that I really like. I want a nice banner. So I have my little icon, which looks like, which looks like what? The, it's the hedgehog makes thing. Is it? Is it on there? It's not. <laughs> well, it's just a pretty basic little hedgehog that Astronac drew up, and I love it quite a bit. But we want a main channel logo. So that's a project for the future. The project for today is going to be this. It's not the channel avatar. That is actually my emote. That's an emote from Twitch. So that's my main set of emotes that I just used as my profile picture because I like them quite a bit. Um, but I want an actual like logo, specifically something that was two color, something I can have laser engraved. So we're working on that. I'm not too worried. But what I am worried about is just finishing up this off stream, right before stream. I finished up the soldering for my stealth burner, if we get to that. So I have my fan installed to the two-part um, part tool head, which I did use previously. And that's one of the main bases for using a, uh, a cable with you know, the drag chain, is because I had this tool head PCB. I wasn't using it for anything else. This is probably my last stealth burner for a while. Maybe I say that, but I had it lying around and I had it configured in kind of a funky way. I was previously using 12, a 12 volt fan for my hot end. And uh, I had to do some jank. I essentially had to use a signal wire for like a four pin fan to run 12 volts. So we'll see if this thing still works. If I have to order a replacement, um, should be fine. We should be good. Hopefully I have enough connectors too. I'm looking at that and I'm 
now wondering if I have the right connections because they already used the crimp kit from my other printer. We'll figure it out. But that's going aside for now. So how was it fun today? Got non-fam, kit. Uh, uh, Swan, Swan, A-Z. Another name that I probably keep asking how it's pronounced and then promptly forget, so I apologize. <sighs> da, Dom? Dab, dab, right, right. <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah, that's what you do. For your first message, just say, Hi, it's me, X. <laughs> so I'll remember to, to pronounce your name correctly. Any, I'm probably still going to mess it up, so. Oh, well. So, we should just get started because we have a lot to do. Uh, the first thing I want is to preheat my soldering iron. I was soldering on it, so I had to change the tip out. I do use the same soldering iron for both soldering and heat sets. I don't have a separate one yet. I have a cheap one ordered on order from AliExpress. We'll see how that is, but should probably get a dedicated little heat set tool because I do so many of them. Finally got around to picking up some high temp RTB silicone so you can seal the heat bed edges. Nice! Now, I haven't done that yet, and I don't know. I'm not super worried, at least for my application. You know, never printing it completely unattended, and I've been using my simple core. That's been fine for me, and it's 2.4, so if it fails, it's going to sit on the bottom, and it has a temperature shut off uh, thermal fuse. Plus, it has clipper, so it'll shut off if it detects something that's not normal. But it's a good idea, definitely. And I do have some, so we can play around with that in the future. Uh, something else that I have to do and print out is some type of chamber um, air purifier. I think I'm going to go with the bento box. That looks pretty good. I was originally going to get... Let me adjust this where it falls. I was originally going to get the... Just the regular Nevermore XL, but I've heard the bento box is better. It has three fans. And I'm going to be using this strictly probably for ABS. Because it's an ABS machine. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but let me jump over to the manual and kind of show you where we're at. I should be this step, the gantry. So we need to do the XY joints and the rails. So we already have that installed. Um, we already did a lot of this last stream. I did reprint out a bunch of parts. So we should be good. Uh, no, we are on. Here, XY joints. Alright, this is where we're going. Hey, Major, Ge Major Gamer Geek. How's it going? Put the self burner away for now. I got a lot of self burner parts. It's a lot of parts. It's like a whole project just itself. Just building a tool head. I was contemplating just doing it off stream. And if we don't get it done today, I probably will. Because, let's face it, there are videos on how to do this. Um, I'm sure there's at least one other build guide on how to do a 2.4 with self burner straight off the bat. Or is there? I don't know, let me know. That is also self burner. A little bit of a mess, but that's okay. We will survive. Hey Dylan, welcome in. Oh, one other thing that I'll mention is I printed off a mod. I don't know where it is, but it's printed and it's somewhere. But it's a temperature it's a thermistor a chamber thermistor adapter that goes on the drag chain so i have that printed and remind me to install that when we do the drag chain because i'd like to have a chamber thermistor hooked up i should have some extra thermistors lying around so that'll be good but let's jump into this we need our xy joint components only four which is nice oh it's this piece right here there it is 
So this will attach to our drag chain somehow and it has a slot for your thermistor. So, cool. Nevermore Max. Nevermore Max. There's a Max Dell? So, I was planning on XL, but I found about Bento Box and that looks slightly better for what I need. Because I was just going to do the, the two fans anyway. I wasn't going to do the extra two. I could in the future, but uh, most of my printers heat up just fine enclosed. So I'm expecting this will be fine. Oh, and one more thing I'll mention is I got another one of these printed. In fact, I got two of them printed. Another one of Steve's remixed hex trays just to sort out some of the components. This is in Polymaker Galaxy Dark Blue. And then I actually, I printed off another one because we're going to need it. And this is in Christmas. Color change. I swear, it's not color changing, but apparently the camera thinks it is. Uh, this is in Christmas green. Wow, that's a uh, pretty interesting. Okay. Let's not get started on colors today. No colors. Is that big 300 by 300? Wait, what? Oh, oh, you just mean... You mean it's the regular um, air, air purifier? Yeah, I have one of those. That's funny. Alright. So. XY joints. We need two of these with M5 nuts. So let's get those. And then turn on... Turn on the uh, soldering iron because I'm sure we're going to need to do some heat sets. It's not a Voron without heat sets. I was very tempted to just work on this today. Like, oh man, I just want to build it. You know, you get to that point where you're so close, given we're probably like halfway done, but you know, we're getting major progress and I just want to finish it. This is a project that I do want to finish. In fact, I'm putting off other projects that I've sort of started because I just want to get this done. It's been lurking for many months and it's finally getting done. And then we can start new projects, right? We can get the old projects done and pour stuff the new ones. Ideally. That's how that works. Wow, that just uh, dropped into the chamber of Non-existence. Okay, well. <laughs> Hopefully there's some extra fasteners. YouTube, yeah! High quality streaming. We love that. <laughs> okay. Right XY joint. I don't know which one that is, but we'll figure it out. this one right here and stop wires we're not gonna be what are we doing for end stop you know what what are we doing for end stops I have no idea Yes, I can cheat and do sensorless homing, but I'd rather just use end stops. <laughs> what are we doing for end stops? What is the tool head P? Does it have an XY on there? I have XY end stops on the tool head PCB. And Mr. Ox. Is it just one? Um, X is on the tool head. Remember, I self-sourced this. So let me just scroll and see. Oh, it's on the tool head. Uh, I have my self burner up right here. Let me, let me just see, because I don't know if I printed anything for that. It's an 80XL now. Uh, Z is clicky. Yeah, Z is clicky plus sex bolt. That'll be fine. I have that. But 
Um, I've, I've, I've never seen an end stop on here because I've never built a real stealth burn. I've always built the modded ones. Is it in here? Am I just missing it? Can so All right, someone figure it out me. It's on a pod on the right hand side. Y rail. Oh, is it mounted on the gantry? Oh, it's on the gantry. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Is it that little PCB thing? Is it a little PCB? Does it have one of those? I didn't know if that was going to be compatible with this. But does it look like this? Is that correct? I, I have this. I don't know where this goes. Yes, it's this. Okay. <laughs> I just, I was thinking about that. Remember, I never really use end stops for my XY. I always use sensorless because I'm lazy. Like, ah, let's set up sensorless. We end up spending like a day setting up sensorless and we can just install end stops in like two seconds. I, I don't know why I continue to do that, but. <laughs> All right. A brief heart attack. So for this, we are screwing in M5 by 40, not through that hole, this one, flipping upside down, and a bearing stack. So shims, one, we need our Berserker bearing from West 3D, two of those. A bear end stop in the self range. All right, so it's like a position for the end stop to engage. I was wondering if there was actual, like, end stops on the tool head. We went from the PCB to sensorless. We did CAN bus. Uh, that makes sense. Clean up the wiring. I mean, sensorless works. It's just less reliable, especially on a core XY. It should be okay in most cases. Like, I still use it on simple core. That's an even bigger, less tuned machine. All right, so it looks like we need this one. Yeah, this one goes on and we're connecting it where? In this rear, okay, yeah, Makes sense. It's like this, it's kind of weird. Do I have to screw it in now? I'm inserting, yeah. So I'm gonna get to flip it around and then screw them all in. Seems like. Plastic carry can print to screw the end stops too. The PCB makes things a bit easier. It's also a Hall effect sensor board if you wanna be fancy. Nah. Nah, we don't wanna be fancy. Page. 191. What page are we on now? <laughs> 200. I said we're halfway there, but I don't know. What else is there to do? Like, I'm serious. We almost have the gantry built. What What else is there? Like, what's going to take that much time? We get the entire Z assembly and then XY assembly, and that's like core XYZ. Not core XYZ, but... Those are the three core components. And also, how are you supposed to do this without losing your nuts? Doesn't seem right. Is that right? Hold on. Oh yeah, there's definitely... Okay, we need an Eiler too. So for some reason, they use... Um... These? For two of them? Just two. That doesn't make much sense. Belts. Tool head. Yeah, what's after the tool head? And this isn't right. Um, something ain't right here. Let's see. Where, where? Oh god. What is this supposed to look like? It's supposed to look like. Right. Golden Jaguar. I'm trying to big. Oh, this isn't a hole. Okay, that's why. Okay, that, that's that's where you fasten it to the frame. 
or to the extrusion. I was like, what the heck is going on here? Oh, jeez, we're losing. We're losing all kinds of stuff. Ugh. Okay, undo. So put all your bolts in first. <laughs> Someone said I was going to struggle with the... I don't know, the... These things? But I guess this is where I've struggled the most so far. Probably because these end stops just... Not the end stops, but the... The nuts are in deep, and they don't stay straight. And they come right out. So it's like triple whammy. The two idlers are minimized because tiny bearings tend to explode. Well, yeah, so why why not use it for the one? Um, unless... Oh, okay. These are the only ones where the tooth engages. Oh, the teeth engage. That also makes sense. So the rear Y bearing thingies, um, those are all smooth because they're on the smooth side of the belt. Okay. I'm trying to, like, figure that out in my head. Like, did I get the right thing? But no, that's the design. Because technically, everywhere we have tooth against bearing, you're supposed to have a a tooth tooth bearing. Which do we even install one? Uh, not yet. Okay. Wait. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, that's right. Jeez, I'm confusing myself. All right. That goes like this. Common sense? Oh, I don't have any of that. I ain't got no common sense. That's why I'm streaming live to YouTube. Because... I need help. <laughs> what is going on here? Okay. So, no shims, just bearing? Okay. And then this threads into plastic. So, don't over tighten. Kind of get it in there. Good enough. Like this. Then the left side. Where's these? It just feels like I have so many screws. And I just, I don't know why. There's no drop game? Yeah, I know. I know. You guys like your drop game on Twitch. Uh... Um, excuse me, what? Excuse me, what? 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 Is it supposed to do this? There's no catch. It's just an open thing. Is that supposed to happen? That's correct? Okay. I mean, why didn't I just put the... Put the stuff on first, then? See, it's stuff like here, where you might be a little bit confused. If that makes sense to include in the manual. Hey, this is normal. <laughs> because some people get confused. So for this step, um, it just kind of sits there. You can do the bearings first. And then bearings with shims and then drop it in. Like that. And then drop this on top. And this gets threaded into the plastic, like, no, that's wrong. Other side. Yeah, okay, this gets threaded into that middle, middle one right here. 
So let me screw that up in the bottom. All right. Uh, I, well, why? why? Why didn't I do this first? Huh? <laughs> I am so confused. I could have just done this first. Like, it doesn't matter. It's like... <laughs> that goes like this, and then this goes like that. <laughs> what? What? Is that even right? I guess so. All right, then two more from the other side going down. So you can't really do that. So you have to push them in from the bottom. I said you can't really do that because everything's going to fall out. So you got to push them in from the bottom. Oh my god. Alright, side story time. Um, so, on the 25th, as you all might know, I am doing a pretty massive uh, give back stream over on Twitch, which does have drop game. And I want to make a game for it, so today I made a Plinko board. And I'm currently actually printing it. Right down here. It's gonna be Oh boy, six big pieces that are each 280 by 280. And then it's gonna have a frame around it. So pretty big. I'm using Polymaker Draft PLA for the bottom parts, and then I'm color changing to just white uh, Polyterra PLA Plus for the top. So that way I can use, you know, the material I have the most of for the bottom. Nothing is happening on the 25th. Everyone take the day off on the internet. <laughs> no, even later. Yeah, you want a chance to win stuff like, um, oh, I don't know, LGO Superpower Motors, West 3D Fabrico gift cards. Stuff like that. It'll be fun. I'm, I'm excited just to play the game. So I have just a week to completely print and build this. Luckily, they don't take too long to print. And I'm just printing it, trying to print it on this printer. The first layer did not look good at all, but it's still printing. It's only three millimeters thick. Need another one of these. And it's a filament. We're probably maker. We like that. I got the muted white polyterra in today, and wow, that is a nice looking filament. Like it's, it's pretty nice compared to the regular white, and I'm very tempted to start using that for some different projects. Add a drop of CA glue. Oh, jeez. Oh, you mean as of installing them? Yeah, okay. That would have been good. <laughs> Galaxy Teal. Nice. Yep, mine should be coming in. Polymaker now has released Galaxy Teal ABS. So if you're building a printer like this and want it in Galaxy, um, the first color has come. Oh boy! You know what time it is. It is lube time! I got my big, chonky, berserker... Rail from West 3D. Maybe, maybe. That we'll be using. It's an MGM uh, 12. And it needs lube. So, let me find that. And once again, I don't recommend this, but you can use the fill port on these. It has a little fill port. But uh, I usually take this off and do it manually. So again, my process, if you forget, is I squeeze a little bit. Down here. I don't actually go all the way because it squeezes out, but I do that and then do that. It's like this, and then carefully reinsert it. And then I go back and forth a bit 
Um, and yes, you can lose ball bearings doing this method. It is possible, but I don't know. I tend not to really lose too many, if anything at all. And I have, even with this one, zero... It doesn't feel like I'm going to lose any. They're very, like, very smooth. They're smooth running. So if they come stiff a little bit and they bind up, they tend to explode. But you just give a little bit of a back and forth motion to get all the bearings coated. It'll break itself in eventually, but should move nice and smooth. Perfect. Over lube. Yeah, you can. You can do that. And I, they have fill ports, so I can do it from the future for the nozzle and the screw hole. You can do that too, but it doesn't actually... You see how it has this middle section right here? No lube is actually supposed to go there. So what you're doing, if you put it right through the middle gap, is you're squeezing it onto here. And barely any of it's going to get into the ball bearing. So you're just going to make a mess. It makes so much more sense to do it this way. And if you want, we can add a little more while we're at it, because why not? And this is just the method I developed, I guess. Let's do this and then slide that back on. Oh, so you lost our first ball. And uh, again, I'm being not very careful, but it, it's so easy to just pop them back in that I don't care. You can use a little zip tie. Which side is it? This one. The MGN 12s will probably have a higher chance because of the fact that they're longer. The 9s were pretty, pretty good. Again, be careful. I have to insert it kind of straight too. The more lube you add to, the more resistance the ball bearings see. So yeah, that's my method. Don't try this at home unless you want to, I'm not going to say properly, but efficiently lube them, because it takes like two seconds, and I recommend doing that over a paper plate. Yeah, I got spares. I got plenty of spares. And they're pretty much all the same, so. There's that. So the next thing we need to do is follow this. We need to grab our last extrusion. Beautiful, beautiful green... LTO extrusion and add some from the dreaded T nuts. How many? Now let's grab a couple. M3s. We're going to mine the orientation. I don't think it matters that much. I don't. But your mileage may vary. All right, up there. How many will I need? A good question. These are spaced out a bit more, I feel like. Are they spaced out more? start on this side right here 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 and here no all right is that right you do outer edges and then every other Oh, so you're saying if, well, you can't do every other on the ones with odd number of holes, right? Uh, uh, this one, I guess this one actually goes the other way. We gotta flip it around if we're being technical and following the guide. So is it four on each side? Has anyone used a lightweight beam for their X on a Voron 
um, Trident or 2.4. Has anyone done that? I see it a lot on the the V0, but that's one of the printers that needs it the least. But this is not going to be a speed printer, it's more of like a, a looks printer. So we'll stick with a nice green extrusion. Yeah, so we'll do this. So we're going to end up with one side not attached, which is fine. Should be fine. Give me some 8mm screws. Mount this. Hell, you could probably get away with mounting at three points. You really can. Uh, these rails have very little flex, and unless you put a ton of force on it, like with tap, then I don't see it being a huge issue. So what I'm just doing is getting them kind of snug, but still have plenty of room to move it around, so I can get these all aligned. Isn't that correct? Looks like it. No. Only margin is going to increase your speed. Right, like I'm not going over... My goal for this is just around 5k XL, which is like nothing. It's what I run in my printers usually. And I know it could probably go higher, but I don't need to put the extra wear on it. When I'm... I don't need to be printing fast. Sure, it's fun, but I don't need the speed. I'd rather go for pure reliability. Um, and that's what I think this printer is going to be good for, is just being reliable. For the most part, right? So I have one of these. Do I have another? <laughs> Wait to YOLO it. The X doesn't matter as much for alignment because you're not aligning it to anything. You're just aligning it to itself. But it matters to get pretty much 99% of the way there. We do have a second one, so... Uh, what I usually do is I put them in the middle to start. That's what has some heavy elephant's foot. So it's going to be a bit tight, but I put it in the middle like that. And then I start with the very most middle one. Tighten it up. Go over here and tighten this one. And go over here, tighten that one. Move this to the outside, although they're probably not needed at this point. Do the next one. And that one. This one. I think that's it. Good. That aside, guess our only MGN 12 rail. Awesome. Nope, not awesome. I didn't actually measure it, I just installed it. Wow, okay, so we gotta undo all these. And I forgot to... <laughs> I forgot to space it. My bad. What are rails going for these days? What are rails? A typical linear rail will cost anywhere from 20 to $25. For a decent one and you don't want to cheap out it's one of the items where it's just a couple dollars more you might as well get a good one these are west 3d's berserker rails they tend to cost around five to ten more than your typical rail um but they should be worth it in the long run just having good quality components at the front when you start your build i prefer that I'd also prefer to get this correct the first time. Persuasion. Slowly get this into alignment. And then grab my calipers. Assume better bearings. Yeah, better tolerances, more consistent tolerances. Better machining. I've noticed out of the box that they feel a lot smoother than 
some of the other ones I've tried, including their regular CNA rails. But they all work. And if you're trying to save money, you don't necessarily have to get them, but it can be a nice bonus if you're going for a speed, reliability, etc. Uh, these are high temp rails. That's one of the main differences. They can... They work up to higher chamber temps. So if you're trying to print stuff like ABS, that's enclosed with a heated chamber, uh, they should work a bit better in the long run. I don't know. I only know a couple people that are trying to push those high temps. I mean, no, higher than ABS temps, like 100C, etc. Stuff where you have to consider start considering aluminum components but this is a berserker build we have the berserker rails all the way around we have berserker bearings as their uh bearing kit and anything else berserker we have their undertaker nozzle to install actually i don't have one for this Dan, I don't have an Undertaker, no an Undertaker nozzle. I think I undertook it for another printer. Uh, I need to get like a mass load of them. I really do. All right, so that rolls nice and smooth. Perfect. General advice for the rails is to use the best for X. Yeah, so the fact that this is by itself, this needs the most, I guess the best tolerances. Um, and then the other two, they kind of even out if there's issues. So, originally we were just going to go with the Berserker for the X, but then we just did the whole, the whole printer in it. More T-Nuts, and we're going to mine the, mine the type this time, so don't randomly install the wrong size. Uh, and then go on top. So this face is like this, and that face is like that. Same thing for the other side. High end for X and Y and the average for Z. Yeah. Well, even at the Z though, you do want to make sure that they're decent. I wouldn't get low quality for anything from one of these printers, right? You're building a custom high end printer that's supposed to be reliable with high quality. Like, that's the main goal. I, I just wouldn't buy any of the even the cheaper kits, I can't say that I'd recommend them with the experience that I've had with some of the cheaper components. Uh, it's not worth it. The amount of time, like you're watching me, this is stream four, and I guess we're almost around halfway done or so. I, I don't necessarily know how far we are into it, but there's a lot to do. Uh, we have to do clicky. That's going to be a pain to set up. But yeah, it takes a lot of time, and you want to put the best stuff into it. Oops, that actually doesn't do that. Just need one. One on each side. Both M5s. You have CNA rails in your first B2. They still perform well. Yeah, the CNA rails, the properly spec'd ones, those are good. That's what West 3D uses for their standard rails, and yes, they do work well. And they come in black, if you like black. Black is nice. What's even nicer is attaching our x-axis together. Awesome. So it looks like it's gonna go like this. And then we need this right here and that right there. Awesome. I'm running out of room to work in. <laughs> Gotta like work inside the printer eventually. All right. Leave slightly loose. Yep, so we're gonna be squaring the gantry in a little bit probably. So fun fact. The only thing that keeps this printer square is the belt tension. If the belts are tensioned correctly and everything else is square, that's actually what's squaring up your gantry. So it's very important to have access to your, your belt tensioning and having a good method for that. Oh, these slide in so nice. Man, it's like every single part that has to go together, it's, it's so good. <laughs> Crazy good. I 
And we need some, oh, these are button heads. Those are these ones right here, M5 by 10. M5 by 10 for the, this side. I'm guessing I have it close enough. Yeah. Rails are much better on larger printers. Rods don't scale up well. Oh, uh, Coffee Tech. I didn't see your message. Sorry, it's pretty small over there. Linear rails, linear rods. Yes, uh, linear rails are self-supporting. So, they're generally better in terms of large printers, but even for small printers, I find that linear linear rods and those bearings are a lot more picky in which orientation they're in, and they're just not as tight. I I don't know. I've just never been as as stiff. So you need to have two that are very secure and parallel to each other, and for your x-axis you have to have two long rods which do flex so it's not really a stiff system it's easier to design i guess maybe i don't know I, I find rails so much easier you slap it on an extrusion and you bolt something to it you don't do anything else that's it so in my opinion rails are far superior and i don't know why printers are still shipping with rods besides probably being cheaper like slightly cheaper Okay, we got those on here, and for this side, we need to get our cable chain adapter thing, which I think it's this. Yeah. And just to confirm, I want to confirm that the the type I'm using is the two... Oh, is it three? Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> I need the three-hole drag chain. Oops. Oops. I assume two. All right, let's fire up the printer. That's funny. I see, why did I assume two? So the ones that West 3D sells are the three hole, but they're not the expensive ones. And that's something where you don't want to mess when you run all the wires through. I guess are two. Oh, the I guess are two hole. Oh. Okay. I had that the backwards then. Let's see. What is this? Uh, I probably have this already. It's a standard component. This is a special one I should be printing. <laughs> So I need to print off this in three hole, because this is, will not be compatible. I don't think it will, right? It shouldn't be. Is it? Is it still compatible? Go canvas. I know. He's. I get it. Clearly superior. Uh, oh, it still mounts. So it does it. Hmm, sort of? Oh man, that's close. Can we cheat? I'll, I'll print out the right thing. Yeah, and and JWPs with two holes. Well, I can just reprint the part. Like, that's not, a, that's not a huge deal. So let me go into my printer. That's an accent color. Documents. Feel files. What is that called? Gantry? X axis? XY joints? Uh, cable bridge? Is that what it's called? And I need a three hole. Perfect. It'll take 25 minutes, okay. And my filament is kind of ideal, it's gonna put on the floor. Not ideal. I usually have the filament like on the desk feeding down because I don't have any room yet. 
All right, continuing. Because I don't know if we need that on there now. I guess we kind of have to. Let's just install it. We're not installing the drag chain right now, right? So let's just put it on temporarily. And we can use it. You just screw in two holes, it looks like. But it's not lined up perfectly. And of course, we just want to test for everything. So these are 16s. I don't know if I've used those yet. Uh, I have. I'm 5 by 16. Okay. A beautiful build so far. Well, thank you. I think the colors are quite exceptional. These are Polymaker's ABS colors. And right after I built this, or printed all the stuff, they came up with a ASA in the same colors, which would have been nice, but after they're printed, they're not that much different in terms of performance. But put that on like this, and instead of leave it snug, so or leave it loose. So we're going to leave it like a turn loose, so it still has room to kind of flex a little bit. It, it can still flex a little bit. You plan on fully enclosing it? Yes, we're going to enclose it. Um, right now, I don't have the acrylic panels, but we'll get those in once it's done. M5 shim on the bottom. M5 shim with an M5 by 30 button head. That goes into this hole right here and hopefully lines up with the bolt. Why a shim? It must just be too, like the wrong size. But why a shim? That doesn't make any sense. Why a shim? They never use shims for this application. Like some, they're button heads, so they can go directly on the part. But some really happy instant panel. You know what? You know what? It's like aluminum foil. I don't know. <laughs> there is stuff you can use, but of course, it's going to be nice with the actual panels. Uh, and we haven't even printed out any of the clips of the panels, so we have plenty of time. I want to print them out in Polymaker's Galaxy filament, Galaxy ABS when it comes in. So I'm just going to not for now. And we don't need to print ABS on it. I have two printers that can do ABS <laughs> eventually. Let's make sure that this is going. Take a look at my progress. 0%. Perfect. What's it doing? Okay, it's almost at temp. Just barely. Cool. Get new acrylic panels. The ones that came with your kit aren't nice. Oh, well, sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, West 3D has some... Uh, you can get them locally sourced from a lot of places. I think you can even cut them yourself. But yeah, I want I want nice quality quality panels if I can. Check your work. All right, check our work. So we have this out front, that behind, this right here, and that right there. Yeah, it's important. Get right. Ooh, that's way too tight. Oof, that is way too tight. Definitely check our work. Was even spinning. Yeah, same for this one, is it? Huh. So these ones right here, too tight. Back it off until they spin. Because they don't need to be tight, they just need to just not um not uh I don't know, be loose. Uniform bot kit they're using to build the Doom Cube. Oh nice. That's cool. Uh yeah, printed solid has some for sure. I think, is that what I'm getting? I don't even, I don't know. 
Whatever Dan sends me, that's what I'm getting. Insert at an angle. So I'm going to flip this upside down. It's over here for now. Flip it like this. Okay. Insert at an angle. Hope to install. I don't know necessarily what it means, but we're just going to install this. That's a challenging ish. Not really. We just get the bolts in first. So these use some. Um, 16 m3 by 16 12 m3 by 16 socket you reckon installing the c on some filament boxes that's not a bad idea although i don't have any filament boxes <laughs> just just some filament spools here well Put on some polymaker spools. There we go. And that is not a bad idea at all. Look at that. Genius. <laughs> we got polymakers, uh, what is this, light green and then teal? Good idea. Hey, and we can. I guess I'll just dump these in here. So we use our new holder, but that's not necessary. And I'm putting the bag underneath the screws so I know what they are. And it wants us to just install a couple right now. Oh, and stop insulation. Okay. So just two here. This right here. And then put them in fairly loose because we're not probably tightening them yet. Did it tell us to put them in tight? I wouldn't. I mean, you can. But you should tighten these while you... I don't know. The, those... I guess there's no play. Why don't you get them all in and tighten them up? Soup cans. <laughs> hey, the same... I, I'm wearing the shirt, but the same the Autobot stream. We don't have no soup cans. Your PC started playing the sound out of your webcam? Wait, what? <laughs> These on right here. And does it have a racket against the front or the back, probably? The front or the back? Probably the, the front? They both seem like good, good positions. I thought I'd go in. There we go. So I'm getting those in, mostly in, and then we'll, you can tighten them, there's, there's more play where the joints attach. Okay. Yeah, once we get them, I usually get them both, both sides in. Oh wow, that's a lot of play. Okay, I see what you mean. But uh, I like to get them square, like mostly square. And it's weird that they'll tell you to like put them square. Uh, I mean, hell, we can, we can use these if we really want to. We can... You can squirt just like this, right? That's one way to get square. But you're not actually squaring it to the extrusion. I guess you are, because technically the rail should be squared to the extrusion. But then it's not really accurate, because the actual thing isn't on here yet. Is it accurate? Yeah, as long as it's accurate. As long as this is square to that, that should be good. And get this nice and tight. Cool. And then I guess we'll do the same thing on this side if we're going to do that. Nothing. Uh, yeah, that seems to work. <laughs> I just like when everything's as square as possible. Checking it. Looks good to me. And yeah, we still have a lot of room for play. 
like a lot of room, but I don't know. Having these kind of lined up flush, yeah, that feels good. Doesn't matter. Is that it? Z axis. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna go in and sh 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 rewind rewind the stream. And finish assembling the Z-axis. We didn't do that yet because we didn't have the panel. So we're going to go back to the step where we had to install the panel and then do all of that. So this thing is going over here for now. Okay, that's going there for now. We're not going to drop it. I'll make your film that's going back on the shelf. Did you get to the part that goes with the X, Y, and soft PCB? No, not yet. Um, that said, in a future step. So, apparently that step is not now. But we need to finish the frame before we go any further. That's very important. Let's see where I left off with this. Go back way in the manual. Um, way, way, way back. Like, way back. Okay, we did this part, but we need to do... Uh, panels, panels, panels. Where the heck do we mount the panels? Panels, here we go. Panels? Panel! Yeah, the bed's not going on yet, don't worry. I did put the heater on today, so that's currently chilling. And I'm just going to leave the stock magnet on for now. I can replace that in the future. So we're going to flip this upside down, very carefully, I'm not losing any of our <laughs> bearings. But which one's our front? We have to pick a front. Unfortunately, we don't have a front yet. This has kind of just been the front, so I guess this is the front. And let's grab our deck panel. Um, so these come... They come... CNC'd right onto the plastic, so you have to do the peel. Let's do that live. I haven't looked at this yet. Yeah, I think these needs a couple days. It sure does. I tried to rush. Wow, I'm gonna want to touch this. I'm gonna want to touch this. Ooh, yeah, these are nice. These are. What, what are these called? I'm not an expert, but they have two sheets of metal on the edges. ACM? ACM. There we go. So these are ACM. ACM. Fancy. Should hold up well to heat, right? I think the stock design is ABS. ABS does not like being this big next to the heater. As you know, you might try not to touch it. I really don't want to touch it. It's clean. Look at that. Wow. That is whew, whew. nice. Oh, it's matte too. It's like uh, kind of matte. So perfect. Doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, aluminum clad. Okay. Aluminum composite. Sure, works for me. So this goes on. Ooh, we can go with overhead. This goes on. Right like this. Oh, wow, that does not look good. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to do that. <laughs> too, too many lights. <laughs> that goes on like this? No, it doesn't. We need nuts. Nuts! There. I'll scratch it. I don't even want to touch it. I don't want to put it down. Uh... Here, I'll wash that against here. But we need to put some nuts on. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> okay. So these are slide to the side nuts, unfortunately. We could do this. 
I can show you the overhead for that, I guess. So it gets like this. And then you gotta smush them in. Go. Easy. Easy. Here, I put the open face the other way for no reason at all besides symmetry. Easy. Look at that. We're experts at these. Are the M3s like worse for some reason? No. Can't be. Maybe I was just installing them incorrectly. Some of them just definitely don't seem as easy. You gotta put a lot of force into it. Like, it feels like you're gonna mess something up. So make sure you're not gonna slip and damage something. Or even hurt the extra. At the bottom doesn't matter. In fact, this is never gonna be seen. Hey, printer, how's it going? Uh, post insertion nuts. Uh, came in your Fisic kit, slip real easy. Well, these are LDO frames. And I I tried these in my Zyltec extrusions, and they, like, they go in so easy. But these are just slightly smaller and more stiff. I don't know if that's any better. It's a different design. I don't know. But all I know is that it's a thing. So I'm going to put this on like that and line up something. What are we lining up here? Wow, that goes all over here. Okay. That goes like this. I'm going to put these in the middle. Like that. Perfect. Ignore the lights. Then next we need our... Um, oh no. We need our DIN rails. Are my rails? Hmm. One moment. I definitely have those. But I did not take them out yet. That worries me. Where could you be? I definitely unboxed them. I remember unboxing them. And they should have gone in the parts bin with all the rest of the stuff, but I haven't seen them since. I'm wondering if I put them in a random container -y thing. So talk amongst yourself in chat. <laughs> Admire the beautiful build. So beautiful. Make sure they're not in one of these things there so we have we have these these are not what we need uh these are like the grommet thingies so, yeah say hello introduce yourself that's what you're gonna do introduce yourself in chat say who you are if you have a voron printer if you don't have a voron printer if you plan on building one if you've ever purchased from west 3d if you know what Maker Deck is, we still got to answer that question. 
What is make a deck? While I scavenge the oh god, don't drop that. Scavenge the heart spoons. Get one with the rails. I don't know if you have to spots with them. Bring it not too far without that. I mean, we don't technically have to. Um secure them today. Alright, we could just kind of hack it. But I'd prefer to do it correctly the first time. These are all parts. This is my... That's where some of the extra stuff went. PCP cookie. There's our board. Build a deck. You should share a deck build there. Oh my god. <laughs> deck building deck. Well, in terms of getting this done, I think we're going to kind of cheat for now. Because by installing the motors, that'll hold it in place. Uh, or we can... What size does this have to be? Hmm. No, I don't have that. It's like, I have some of those hanging around somewhere, but uh, no, they're in use. What do you guys think? What should I do? Should I just screw in their M5s? So everything with M5 holes. I could just like hold it in place. There it goes that. <laughs> the one thing was supposed to drop. Okay. I can hold it in place with some unused components. Temporarily. Eh, like this. While I search them. Uh, they're probably in one of the bins because they move some stuff around. Then rails hold it in place. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that after. Because the point was just putting this in first before the motors. Like, that's the only thing. Uh, we're not doing electronics today, so I will hunt around. And then what size? Uh, M5 by 10. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you're planning on building a boron printer, I'd recommend buying an LDO kit from West 3D. It comes with everything you need. The first time. One package. Okay, that works. <laughs> but we like hacking. So luckily I have a lot of spare, spare parts because they Printed bad. <laughs> I kept them. I don't know why I keep bail printed parts. You can just slide the deck in from above. You can slide the deck in from above. Can you? Could I have done that the whole time? No, no, I can't. Because I need the... The whole point is the... The holes, the belt has to go through the holes. So the deck has to be in here. I don't care how it's held down. It has to be here. I was wondering if we'd run into any snags. I guess it's the first one, and it makes sense that it's due to not knowing where I put something. Because remember, I've been acquiring parts for this for months, months now. And i just been getting stuff in waves. Because of just how many components there are. 
Decks require wood. Where's the wood? Uh, here's the wood laminate. Not really wood. Okay. Next. We need to do these. So we already did all of this step. And we left off at this. So we're installing the M5 T-nuts. I'll do that now. And I'll move the camera up for you. So you can see. Not like that. Nothing like that. Even with the Z-belts. Just remove loosen on the side of the fireplace. Ah, this will be fine. We'll manage. Alright. So we need a bunch of... Okay, more of those. I see why you have a bunch of those. It's all the M3s that I have no idea. It must be for the... For the... Um, panels? All the M3s? It's like a ton of M3 T-nuts left over after this. No idea why. Not installed. Your build, just uh, sessions. I mean, this works. I don't see anything wrong with doing this for now. Just temporary, holding in place. Because I don't want to get the motors in. It'll be kind of a pain. So we're planning on getting the belts done today. kind of in there for now. We'll just do one side. And then we'll grab one of our pods. Um, the other one. No, it was right. All right, this is actually the, this is the back. This is the front. We need it. Okay, we need to look like it's facing the back. It's facing the back. So we need to look like this. Is that correct? Uh, can't go any higher. Um, is that correct? I'm guessing it is. So we need to have... I can't even get this. Jeez. That's really as high as it goes. Filament! Where art thou, filament? We need a ridiculously high tripod. Go. Okay. Perfect. Ish. You gotta see what I'm doing, even though it's it's completely blown out. We need two M5 by 40s. Is that right? I can't. Oh, it is. These are just too close. This aside. So we need to get these lined up. Um, kind of like that. Okay. I see. Yeah, it'll... It'll go like that. Perfect. And then we need the 40s here. Two of those. That kind of aligned, I don't know how perfect it's going to be. It doesn't have to be exact. But it's getting it squared up to the frame as best as I can.
that insane? I feel like that can go up a little. This thing isn't just... It's its not going to be perfect. <laughs> I'll tell you that. It ain't going to be perfect. But get those in. You can use the ball end if you have to for some light torquing on the larger screws. Those work fine. It's just those smaller ones you want to try to avoid. It's better design than 2.1. That's what I've heard. It's like a pretty good... Good build. We need this. So we I already did this last time. So we have the motor, slide it in place, putting the belt on. Seem right. Right. Huge gap. Is there something else? What is that? What is that piece? What the heck is that? What is that? Okay. <laughs> um, and five by 10. I'm assuming I have the rest of the parts, but then again, I could have probably just missed some easily. As you know, there's a lot of parts to print for this. And then sometimes you might forget. So unless you track everything pretty carefully, you might miss something. So I'm guessing that's the type of tensioning mechanism. Slide into place. Okay. Neat. I do black and white. Email them for other colors. Ah. White panels? That would look nice. That's a nice one. Yeah. Time to bit in the pile. That's one, two, three, four. Awesome. So four of those. And then they must be, yep. So two of them are mirrored. So this is what's going to like tension it into place, I guess. Maybe we'll find out. Add some car vinyl film to add some effects. Ooh, that'd be nice. All right, don't tighten. Move some of this one back up a little. Close the belt tensioner. Oh, oh, that's genius. Oh, wow. Okay. Awesome. So when I flick this in. It presses against this part and properly tensions this belt. <laughs> That's amazing. So I'll show you one more time. So you see how this is loose? Can't see anything. Watch this. Huh. Okay. Okay. I like that. That's that's pretty nice. And we tighten them. Awesome. Oh, feet. I got feet in. Where'd those go? I got some feet. Those round? Do I put them on now or later? <laughs> it's probably going to be a later thing, because I can't find them yet. No, you're in a box. These ones. Oh, it's up there. Maybe it's okay. A lie pops though from my 3D. Those are tempting. Mm 
intriguing. Those should be relatively close because I was just, again, messing around with them, but apparently not. So we're going to not do feet right now. We have the stock ones, but we'll just slide it around on the printed part. It'll make it easier to slide. How's that sound? Or should I attempt to find it? Uh, are they in here? Easy. Oh, okay. They're in here. Got them. Well, use the feet. All right. So I just bought the these style of feet, which should be better, I guess. Oh, speaking of feet, so it looks like bamboo released a special special absorb frequency absorption feet or something for the X1 the P1P not the X1 just for the P1P what do you guys think of that I saw a lot of comments that on on really fast printers that vibrate a lot you don't actually want to have it kind of like jiggly you want the vibration to translate into the surface, such as a giant slab of concrete, and then decouple that concrete. I think you see them is neat. Every bit of plastic shows up on them. Um, gotcha. These ones look really nice, and they'll, they'll be fine for now. They are fun. So there's that. Check position. Uh, make sure it didn't shift. Uh, it actually did seem to come off on that side. Let's fix that. But even like this is so nice. Like this design for the tensioning. I guess I never had it correct the first time. Oh, I love it. I love it. Whoever designed this, great job. Seriously. Whichever people are responsible for this, pat on the back. Just for a little more. Wants to like go towards the outside for some reason. This is what it is. All right, whatever. I can live with it. Squash ball feet. Well, that's that's decoupling the printer from the surface, right? So if you have a very heavy printer, sure. But if you have a really light printer, I don't know. Oh, just a just a thought. And we're gonna switch to this the main camera for the rest of these. Repeat. So I think for the X one, I will be putting it on concrete, and then decoupling that with something. I'm not sure yet. Maybe. Maybe the squash ball mod, but squash balls are actually fairly expensive and I didn't really see much benefit. So I'm just going to go with some thick mouse pad. That's my go-to, just a thick mouse pad. So overall, this build has still been going pretty, pretty smooth up to this point. Some minor setbacks, but nothing unstoppable. Power right through it. Oh, 
this, get these lined up. These are M5 by 40s. Thick felt or cork might work too. Yeah, just something thick. There is some special material you can use that's used for like extreme decoupling applications. Those will work as well. Just you want something, in my opinion, you want something kind of rigid, something rigid to hold the whole thing kind of stationary. Like I don't want the printer vibrating. I, I had squash balls. The printer, yeah, it does some kind of nasty stuff when it's on squash balls. <laughs> and I, I don't know. I'd rather it look like it's not moving. I guess. Welcome on in. We're currently installing the Z axis on this printer because I had forgot to order these panels. So this came in and we are uh, messing around with the Z axis. We already built it, but now we have to install it. And the build process so far has been pretty nice for the Z. Oh my God. I'm loving it. Coming from Simple Core, where the motor mount is one piece. One piece. That's it. Oops, I'm smiling these up. Just one. One piece. The entire bottom Z. And the linear rail attaches to it as well. One piece. This is more than one piece. With a whole entire gear reduction in there, it's so much more involved. So it's cool to see different types of builds going from the, the minimum viable product all the way up to what I'm going to guess is probably the uh, nicer of the, oh, did I kill this camera? Are you dead? Probably. Definitely one of the nicer of The designs. There you go. This thing has a finicky cable, and if I kind of nudge it in the wrong direction, it just disconnects. Oh, we have a filament change too. Let's do that. Filament swap. I'll let you look at those orange bearings. Does anyone know what the orange bearing is? Hmm. Interesting. Orange. So I'm swapping out for my Plinko, Plinko board that I designed today on my laptop on Onshape. <laughs> nice about Onshape is that it takes zero or minimal computational power to run, so I can run it on pretty much anything. Like the one major benefit. That's parametric. Ooh, looks like a nice hole pull in this as well. <laughs> we have no worries when we gotta purge white into black. Once it's done, I can do another one overnight and hopefully get this whole thing built days before the event and not just like hours before the event. That would be ideal. Loading filament into this printer is such a pain. KP5L. <sighs> Ooh, but speaking of, Kevin, aka Sam, you probably know him for the dual Z mods for the Enders. He made a extruder. And he's looking for beta testers. So if you're on his server and might have missed his message, I would check that out. It's neat. Okay. 
So we have this in and we're going to now, what was it? You put the screw in first and then you tighten it or put the screw in. This, loosely tighten this and then screw it in. Perfect. Now that's tensioned properly. Doesn't look like it's printing, but it's trying to. Probably didn't purge enough. <sighs> That's already done. Wow, we're gonna flip it around and do the other two. Very quick, once you have it all built. Uh, so facing this way. Sure. in is a little finicky but once they're in they are pretty golden missing a screw on the deck hold down um actually yeah you're right did that ever get installed whatever it, it, good enough Three is fine. It's just temporary. <laughs> uh. I think this is the most involved of... The, um, the Voron builds. Trying to figure out which side. Is it mirrored to this? So, like, like that? Yeah, it looks correct. So if you can build this, you can build any of the, any of the forums, no problem. Especially Trident. Like, Trident would be a cakewalk compared to this, apparently. And this, this wasn't even hard. Uh, I mean, I guess we haven't gotten to the hard parts. Is there any hard parts to this printer? Like, what would you think? If you've seen this printer being built, or heard it being built, or built to yourself, what are the hard parts of the printer? Where do you struggle? I know there's a lot of struggles afterward in terms of tuning, because it's a quad... Oh, we've got some filming gunk there. It's a quad... You know, quad Z printer, and it's a little bit jank. But it's not jank. It's just an interesting design. The fact that it's not linked and you have to like manually correct it before every print. Um, that's always a bit, you know, in terms of CNC, I don't, I don't know. Do they have quad gantry leveling on a CNC machine? Cause that's not how, that's not how it works, right? You need three points to do leveling, not four. So four can have the potential of over constraining. Just move this, it's a little nasty. I didn't catch that until now. A little bit of gunk on the bridging. Perfect, just like new. <laughs> this is the back of the printer. I've determined that. That's on there, and those are firm in place. Oh, we didn't put the, we'll put the feet on after. Then we'll grab one of the motors. one. Oops. Motor, motor. Oh. Oh. Um. Did I put the wrong? Oh. One of these is facing the wrong way. The hardest is the flying gantry trying is a much Easier build. Yeah, that's what I've... That's what I've gotten at. Oh yeah, I did the, the motors wrong. Huh. Alright, that's an easy fix. 
put them all the same way, which that's not. So they should be facing the opposite direction of this. So I'm going to flip that around before I go any further. Otherwise, the cables are running not into the middle. Which direction would you have the motors, actually, if you had to choose or the wiring? Black FEP. Ooh, nice. I'll be using some silicone wire that I've had for the the miscellaneous stuff I have to wire. For the actual for oh, that's wrong. Oh, I had this one right, didn't I? Oh shoot, it's the other one. That was right. Or did I already have it wrong? I don't know what's going on. Uh, anyway, for the drag chain, I'm using the Glen Glenfear. I don't know. It's West 3D's premium cable chain cable kit. Pre-crimped for a toolhead PCB. And PTFE? I think I... If I remember that correctly, it's a nice material. It's perfect for a drag chain. But this cheap silicone that I got is not good in drag chain. In fact, I had some fail on another printer I built and used. Glefnir. Glefnir? Oh, Maker Viking, where are you? I need you. I need your pronunciations. You have them facing inwards. Yeah, I think that's how they should be. Okay, so this this one needs to come around, but I'm gonna mount this one real quick. Which you can't really see, so let's just go to here. Mount this in here. Using one of these temporarily to hook it in. We also need to align our peanuts. Hey, overall, it's like, it's not bad. Um, now, I'm a bit biased because I've built a lot of printers already and have worked with most of this stuff. But your mileage may vary if you're trying to build this at home for the first time. I would probably not build this as your first printer. Probably. For roughly the same performance, just get a Trident. Seriously, just get a Trident. There's almost... Actually, you guys give me reasons. And if you're listening to this in the future, put it in the comments. Why would you build a 2.4 over a Trident if, theoretically, the performance was the same? So besides raw performance, raw speed, what what qualities would the 2.4 benefit from? These are a little off, but it's fine. It'll be okay. Like just like ever so slightly off like a hair. Then we'll get this installed. This is your first printer after an artillery side uh, a genius. Which you killed printing boron parts? That's funny. A well deserved sacrifice, I would say. Well deserved. Two point four. The original reason before I I wasn't forced, but I was sent a 2.4 build plate, and that kind of sparked the whole thing. Um, I like how the bed doesn't move at all. It's really nice to take, you know, a camera feed and point it at it. Nothing's going to move. So I'd rather have the camera stationary and the printer moving versus the printer or the camera moving, um, if you can help it. Or, I don't know. I don't know. Just the, the idea of it not moving, the part at all, it kind of makes me happy. It's like, nothing's moving except for the part that is... It's kind of like a CNC machine, right? The, the part doesn't move. The head, only the head moves.
Put them on its side. They're pretty cool, and I appreciate the development of this. Excuse me. Um, yeah, it would be definitely easier to both build and tune a Trident. Especially because of the quad gantry, or try tri gantry leveling instead of quad. It just makes everything a whole lot easier. And the fact that the gantry doesn't move, well, that's nice because you can more easily do stuff like an MMU or loading filament. And in my experience, having the bed move up and down doesn't hurt doesn't hurt uh, print quality. In fact, it probably helps it. So Trident, I would rank that on top, but this is such an interesting build that regardless of how it strictly performs, it's just nice to have. It's just a cool, cool thing. And I'm into those cool things. And especially, the, and I already have my, I already have Simple Core. So I don't need to experience another regular Core XY like a Trident. It's essentially a Trident. So I want to try something new. Experience something new. I just bought a Crowley machine. Okay. In there. One day I'll move the nuts closer. But I like having them out in a sorting tray. That is pretty nice. I'm getting the hang of it. Watch, I must I missed one thing and then Dung around A350 is not fun. No. No. I essentially have a 350. This build is tiny. This is tiny compared to the simple core. Like, oh my god. I put it next to each other in a one of the I think probably the first build. The frame is so much smaller. It's like the perfect size printer. And the fact that it's self-enclosed. There's nothing sticking out. You can put it anywhere. It's awesome. It takes up as much space as an Ender 3. It really does. It's just the Ender stores with less space. That's all. This last grub screw in. It's not happy. Not grub screw. Peanut. Hammer nut. Nut. Get our nut screwed in. Perfect, and then tighten it up. That is not tight at all. That is not tight at all. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Why is that not tight? Okay, so this one isn't isn't tightening like the others. I don't know why. That's not screwed enough yet. Yeah, that's a lot looser. Huh. I don't know. What could be causing that? Any thoughts? Different M5? Pull it tighter? Look at Nero build, the rat rig is massive, yeah. Rec Nero recommended 300. 300 is what I recommend too. Different insertion nut? It's not that, it's the, it's this leveling knob. It's not making contact. Like this one, it clearly makes contact and pushes it tight. Unless this isn't tight. Alright, loosening up this and then re-tightening these, I guess? I don't know. It shouldn't matter. It really shouldn't. That's tight. On there as tight as that'll go. Bearing is in fine. 
Um, yeah, it's just not tight. Huh. Even after it's all screwed in. That will be an issue, so... Those new Polymaker Pop colors, they are not. These are just the PLA Pro colors. I think light green and teal. Two nice Easter colors. So I'll show you what I'm working with. Maybe you can give me some advice. So after properly installed, this is still way too loose. So this thing is just not pressing up against that enough. Yours had the same issue? Okay. I mean, I can manually tighten it. That's not an issue. And it doesn't need a ton of force either. But that's a shame. So all I'll do is just, um, well, leave it like this. I'll use this as like a, kind of a, a wedge and then force it where it probably should. Enough. A couple years like that too. Ah, uh, okay. Alright, so maybe that this piece just needs to be a bit a bit better or something. I I originally liked the idea. But Imagine very okay. So I just gotta take this one and undo this. In fact that doesn't that's definitely tighter though. It doesn't have to be super tight. It's not... Just just enough. Just enough. I think that's the goal. Just enough. But let's uninstall this. Can I do this without... Uh, yeah, I can. The mod to redesign that motor mount that requires different skirts. Oh. Is it really necessary, though? It's just the... The closed loop belt. Belt loops aren't consistent. I don't think that's the case. I mean, these are printed parts. I printed these. I think my, my printed parts are more likely to be inconsistent than anything. I need an LTT screwdriver. So I have that little near old nut. Not necessarily, it looks like a better design. Okay. Nah, fair enough. I mean, I did the front idlers. Apparently those aren't necessary, but recommended. Get that installed the right way. Oh, it's also possible that Thinking of it now, my motor might be too much this way. So maybe I have to like loosen up the motor mount and push the motor more towards the middle. That could be a re like an issue too. Yeah, I'm thinking about that now too. So let's let's just do that for this and see. Does it have any play? Hmm, not really. No thing I think of. And I'm just gonna manually. <laughs> I want to manually do it because uh, yeah, I don't, I don't trust these anymore. Sorry. You had your chance. You had your chance. Well, that's not straight, is it? Oh. That one's fine. That one's fine. This one's fine. Okay, they're all fine. They're all good. We're good here. Enough. Make sure they're tight now before we go any further. Many mods fit in that category. Yeah, I figured. 
I just I didn't want to go and install every single mod ever. Like no, we could do that later if anything, or do mods to improve stuff. But the idlers have been, I guess, known to be problematic, as well as the installing those ball joints. What are those called? The the Z joints. G. 5C920, those things. Yeah, G G E C5 bearings to properly do quad gantry leveling. If we're gonna do it at all, might as well do it with those. Nice, I have some nice thick feet. I like it. Spherical bearings. Yeah, that's the one. Spherical. Spherical. <laughs> First time I'll be playing around with those. Alright, awesome. Less awesome. <laughs> Grandma, why idlers? Why idlers? I know, it just it's like, nope, I'm done here. Uh, to be fair, it is pretty high, so I'm not over it. Um, isn't that what I installed? Yeah, I, I have the Rama wireless. That's what we did last, uh, last stream. So the combination of those are hog. Hog. All right, is this all? Do we need to do anything else?
Testing, test. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> I don't know what I did, but uh, okay. Engagement. <laughs> I I actually I've, I have no idea what happened. Oh, this should be like this too. I apologize. The audio should be more like this. The level should be better, so it's not peaking. All right, what I was saying was that. <laughs> This is essentially stuck to the desk now. That was a trick. Definitely. Sounds good. Alright, cool. Let's go back to this. And... Check your work. Check your work. Check your work. Check your work. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. Where are we? Here. We're here. Alright, this is where we left off. Starting to look like that. Z-joint, Z-belt, Z-idler, Z-drive. Alright. M5 nuts. Perfect. Over here. I have... I'm assuming it's these things. Let's see. Starting from a real printer, I know, I'm excited. This is where it all becomes like real. Guys, this is this is legit. M5s on here. Okay. I'm assuming these are the right ones. I don't know if there's a, a right one for these mods, but I don't use these parts. Are these wrong? Oh they are. Wait, bearing box? Oh, are these wrong? Where did those go? What what parts do I need then? Hold on. Yeah, uh yeah, okay. Yeah, no, bye bye. Alright. So yeah, yeah, so this replaces that nut. So let's do that now. So for these right here, you need to... And if anyone's done this mod, feel free to chime in at any point. But I need to take my spherical bearings and then press them in. And that replaces the nut. So typically you'd have a screw go through the nut into the bottom of the gantry and that holds it in place but we've replaced that with the nut with these and these allow for rotation but still provide stiffness so these slot into here into these grooves wow that is tight those are not coming out i want to do this on camera because i knew they weren't coming out uh, I'm assuming that they're all printed well enough. A little bit warping on this one. Oh, okay. okay, that's in. Thumbs on me. Dead at the end of this. It should be a tight fit. Three. <laughs> okay, one more. Four. Alright, so that's that. Then we need to... Gantry is still upside down. Gantry is not even on the table. I don't know what you're talking about. Gantry is long gone. But I can grab it. Gantry is upside down. Yeah, it is. Okay, it's upside down like this. Um, oh, we take our, we need belt. So you would screw the, the blocks to the Z carriages now. Okay, so where it shows this, we're gonna, we're gonna do this.
that'd make sense. Okay, so first... Wow, this, this is... This is kind of actually jank. Like, it just says, put some belts in. Really? Okay. So we need belt. That's kind of a big step, is cutting your belt. Like a huge step. Like one of the biggest steps. We need to belt this. There's two ways of doing this. Number one, you can manually run the belt and then kind of see where it goes, or you can measure. This is the Z. Z gets nine millimeter belt. Yep, yeah, nine millimeter gates belt. Assuming this is gates. Looks like gates. Feels like gates. It is. Minimum recommended. 1100 millimeters. Oof. Because hold the lower belt attached in place. But the mod, you can't do that. Okay. So let's try to figure out how long our belts are going to be then. So we're going to run it down through the bottom. Down through the bottom. And remember, this is why we needed that handle in first, because you can't put it in after. Easily, probably. I mean, I almost have to tip it on its side to do this part. There we go, got it. Okay, kind of like that. Okay, and then this top part actually goes, uh, well, should have gone in first, but I'll do it after. Wow, yeah, you can't even, you can't even move the, the motor. Wow, that is a lot of friction. Ooh. I feel better about that now. I didn't really feel bad about it, but it feels better. Okay, the belt tension is all the way down. So, if these two are lined up, how much extra should I go? Divide the toy up by four. Yep, okay, that's... Yep, that's what we're doing. <laughs> wow, that was not the idea. <laughs> okay, don't throw your belts. But find two ends. Like, I do this with the Kevin A.K. Sam one, but... Not, not like this. Oof, these are going to be all dirty now. Why'd I do that? Mash teeth count? Eh. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Alright. It comes with extra. I think it's a 5 meter belt or 6 meter belt or something ridiculous, and you only need less than that. So, we're just going to get it close. Belts are cheap. Well... They're, well, they're not, they're not ridiculously expensive, but I also don't have any 9mm belt lying around. So if I mess this up, we're done. I have 10. <laughs> I don't think that'll fit. Okay. But yes, ideally you would kind of go like this and get the teeth matched up perfectly. But, I don't know if that's necessary. For today. Yeah, done for today. Now we're done. We're just, they don't make these belts anymore. Done! Never build a sprinter ever again. Close. <laughs> 
The belts are easy to work, and also select. Yeah, that's what it seems like. I don't doubt them. Careful with the soldering iron. Yeah, I'll get them. I'll get them as close as I can by doing the method where you stick the teeth in each other and then fail to get them lined correctly. More. AV belts though, that's a pain. Especially if using tap. Yeah, I decided not to use tap because I don't need that level of precision on a 3D printer like this. In fact, if anything, I would go for the new beacon. That's what I would go for. But beacon is going on my other printer. I don't know. <laughs> if I had the choice from scratch, I would definitely go beacon on here, but I've never used it, so. It'd be nice to have a working setup first on here and then do beacon in the future. I mean like taps level of, compl of, of complexity, of complexity. I don't need that. Beacon's just like a screw on part. It's even less intense than a BL touch, but it works infinitely better. Hypothetically speaking, I've just seen some basic reviews. All right, so. This goes somewhere. Where does it go? Um, wow, we have belts everywhere. Ugh. First, let's get our clamps. Get those printed is over here. Belt clamps. No clamps. Well, you still you still use the part, but you just how's it work actually? You're right. How does that work? It, it can't just press on because it needs to hold the the belt in place. So it has this right here that goes on as like an interface, and then you put this on. Right? Let's go back to that manual. Is that it? Um, you sure? You sure you don't use it? These came with the... Came with... Came with the... With the STLs. Pretty sure. Oh my god, I have so many tabs. So many tabs. Oh, it gets a washer. It, uh, it still shows, yeah, it's still there. You still use it. But it does need a washer, though. Order in the manual will be wrong. So how the heck do I clamp it, then? And it takes what size? It's M5 by 20. Which mod? This is the... Well, it's a combination of both. This one right here. Which uses that and then the regular parts. Oh, this one needs four.
So it looks like you still install the... Probably. It looks like you still install the main clip using the one M3, but you don't actually have to install that yet. Using the M3 screw. Okay, all right, yep. And then I'm gonna need four, four of the M5 shims, four of them. So, no, sorry, three, three. Remind me to do that when we get to that part. And before we do that, um, is this part done? Oh no, it is very much not done. <laughs> um, man, that didn't work out. What happened? <laughs> oh, I was playing with the level of squish. Like too much, too little. Apparently it's too little. Uh, a little bit of a blobbage of, of death. Let me see if I can reprint that. What is the KP5 doing? What do you mean? It's printing. It's printing. It's printing. Hopefully decent. Ugh. Yeah, I'm doing a test. I might just end up printing this on the simple core, but I'm trying to see if I can do the. do the um, the Plinko game on that printer. So let's see. Where'd the window go? Where'd the window go? Here it is. Plinko, yeah, Plinko. Plinko for Saturday's stream, next Saturday. So now that we've got that out of the way, we're going to put the belt. Put the belt. This is the bottom. Why does the bottom not have a side to it? Huh, weird. So we're going to do this and then do this. that and like this yeah yes seems correct and it's gonna go up and around and over okay yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah. or down down under up or over. something like that and then this takes an m3 by 30 really no way yes no way um Oh, that's why we need extra, extra shims. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, hmm. Belt goes in the inside. Oh, does it? I thought it went on the outside. Is it not? That makes sense. Ow. <laughs> How? Doesn't fit. Um, yeah, that thing doesn't, it's like no space. Oh, does it? It just barely, oh, it barely fits, I think. Yeah, okay. It does, it just barely fits. And so do I leave this one flush right now and then have the other one be very long? There's one with teeth, one smooth. One with teeth, one smooth. I think I just wasn't trying hard enough. Oh, what size do we want? Size, what size? Uh... Or M3 by 16 button heads. Do I have any of those handy? Grab some. Is 
You're awesome. <laughs> She's like, you're... <laughs> oh, I love it. Alright, let's see. Like this. And then like this. It just didn't feel like it was going to work, but... It will. <laughs> Definitely tight, which is good. That's what you want in a belt holder. It's, it's way too long. I can't do 16. No way. There's no way it's 16. That'd be impossible. Why does it say 16? It's not. Am I missing a part or something? Is there like a different part that I don't have or something? There's got to be more to it than that. Because... There's no, there's no way that 16 would work. The button head? It is. It just like goes way too deep into it. Like the max I can screw in is here. Is it, will it work? Oh, it will. Will it work? We'll try it. Jesus. I'll try it. Feels like it's way too long. You think it'll stop? Uh, uh, these should be the modded one? I don't know, actually. These were in the file. Unless I downloaded the wrong one. Because I feel like it should be thicker. It looks like it's thicker. way too long. Is our stock? So what's in this modded file? Let's see, STLs. Z carrier. I have that. Let's go back to the main mod. STLs. Z belt clamp lower. This is the lower and that's exactly what I have. Uh, am I missing something? You don't say to replace the... Hey, welcome in, Pezlis. Um, look at the mod now. Yeah, no. Why is it why is it so long? Huh. So what what is what is wrong here? Am I the wrong one? Do we need like a something else? Is that right? Can't be right. It seems loose. It's way too loose. So they use a shorter one. The the clamp is too thin. M three by sixteen. M three by twelve. It's the sixteen that's bottoming out. Use a stock. This is this is stock. This is the stock clip for this. If it's like the same ones, and I just downloaded the ones that was in their repo because I thought they were different, and it turns out they're the same exact thing. Modded one. Oh, is it because of this? Did I use the stock for? Dark born. Did I think that was dark? Oh. 
Oh. Oh, you're right. You're right. Interesting. It's weird. Yeah, I have, a, I have a ton of those. Oh. And they even have... Okay, there's two of them. So there's one of them that looks like this, and one of them looks like this. So I need the one with the M3. Huh. And those do have the part that goes around. One of them does? It's so confusing. Some of them do, some of them don't. Why? Why is this one? What? What's the difference between those two? But I see what you mean now. Like, wh why? What are these for then? Uh, yes, these are the Rama Idlers. Hypothetically, for the G5 something, whatever's. I did note that. One is lower, one is upper. Are they both M3s on both sides? I thought one of them was dual M5s. They are. Okay, you're right. So the, the, the one without the... Okay. <laughs> this one's lower. This one's lower. This one's lower. And... Uh, this one is lower. So this one is the correct thing that I need to install, correct? Okay. Oh, and then... Well, yeah, you're right, the M5 version. That is warping, okay. Let's stop that. You need the Z-bearing blocks. Z-bearing blocks. So this... There's this and then this. That's it, right? Just those two parts. That's all it does. Just that. Thicker on top, thinner on bottom. Thicker on top, thinner on bottom. Um, what? <laughs> the top ones have a lip for the belt to go around the back. Oh, okay, okay, that's what it's for, okay. I get it now. I get it. Just need more squish. I go between like a little bit extra squish, a little bit non-extra squish. Look just like the top frame now. Is that what it's supposed to look like? Why do I have the thin ones? Remind me why I have the thin ones and why those are needed. If they're needed. So final answer. The these ones that are terminated with the square because these don't stick out. They don't stick out, so it doesn't need that thing. But that on the bottom does because I'll have extra. Mods. It's two mods. It's just two of them. Shouldn't be that bad. But that mod matches the the correct screw length, hopefully. Yeah, it does. It does. We got it. We got it, chat. Woo. The one I'm using is a fork. I'm using, yeah, right. I'm using a fork of a fork, right, right. I'm using a fork of a mod. I don't know why, but again, might as well if if they improve stuff and they're free. All right, so I just need this. Looks like that stays on by itself, and then we'll screw the other part on after we have it installed on the z-axis. That seems more realistic. Yeah, because we can just slide the z up to it and then install it. Mod of a mod of a mod of a mod. It's all good. All right, so there's one of them. Just need to repeat that process again. So I'll do it on this side. This is why I have you guys. Um, and this is why this build could be confusing to someone new. Something very random that you get caught up on. 
that you have to like wait for the Discord to answer you, and then if the Dis can't, Discord can't answer you, then you're kind of stuck. There's no heart K mod here. <laughs> That's why it's tough. <laughs> it's not that, I just don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, that's in. Makes more sense. And the rear one. Oh yeah, they're all the ones with the, uh, the two different sized things. So this one, then let's look at the manual, make sure I'm doing it right. Yeah. Good enough. I know you, I know what you're doing. Have, having fun. Um, yeah, yeah, this is fun. It's a challenge. It's definitely a challenge. It's not for the faint of heart. It's a, it's a challenge. This is kind of like if, the, if there was a printing school, this would be like one of the final exams or like a midterm, like building this printer. Luckily, I have chat. And uh, finally Discord and all kinds of amazing people. So thank you. Thanks for helping. I appreciate it. Is this not used? Okay. Last thing I want to do is like hook up two ends of a belt together. <laughs> Problem solving is part of the fun as well. Maybe by the time we finish this, we'll be able to replace that gantry cable chain thingy. I thought we're gonna, I mean, I always thought, think we're gonna get a lot more done when we actually do, but um, we ran into a few hiccups that cost us some time. So there's that. But so far, the build's gone pretty smooth, right? Nothing too crazy happened. I'm dropping, I'm dropping stuff. All right. Good enough for now. Helping, you mean actively sabotaging? Well, the advice... Oh, I need that. The advice seems good? <laughs> I don't know. Wait until you start making your own mods? Oh, jeez. If V2 doesn't have skirts on, you're already at the count of three. Yeah, um, I'm not going to mod it too much. He says that. But at least at first. All right, then I'm not attaching the other part. Okay. Should I, should I install those now? Let's do it now. Well, let's do it now. I'm just going to screw on, on these guys before I have the whole gantry in the way. I don't know why I wouldn't. M3 by 20. Is that still the case? M3 by 20. Here. Jeez. Yes. I get to dump those out in my new bin. A Z cover and a second was a Bowden tube. What do you mean by Z cover? Z cover? What are you covering? Like the hole in the panel? Bowden tube entry using group, not call it. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the exhaust at all because I'm not using one. Or will I? I don't know. Good question. 
Well, I need an exhaust. No, I'm not. It's sealed. Z belt cover a piece of the on the belt pass through. Okay. It's like right here. Hmm. So you just like screw onto the frame and it's kind of like a little piece that goes here. I can see that. Wow, so we need a bunch of these. I like think the whole kit's just used for these guys. So I'm putting on my bearing thingies now. Get them out of the way. Well, this is out of the way. While I somewhat have access. This part is still printing. Yeah, it's getting a little more, a little more squish. That's all. That printer has some stuff going on with the bed right now that I gotta fix. But remember, don't mod, don't mod or try to fix your printers that do are, that are functional with a little bit of like TLC while you're in the process of building another printer. Like, make sure you have at least one printer that's functional that can print ABS. That's the goal. One ABS printer. I gotta get my KP3S back up because that is an ABS printer with the H2 on it. We're screwing on this piece before we put the gantry kind of into place. Here it still slides nicely. Tight. Don't mod until you buy another printer to fix the printer you're currently modding. <laughs> I gotta say it, but having a bamboo is gonna be extremely nice, assuming that doesn't break, because you're not modding the printer, or you're not inclined to mod the printer. So, hypothetically, again, if everything works as it should, um, it should be a great backup printer. And I think a lot of people that build custom printers have been using it as a printer that's like, okay, I'm just gonna send it to that one because I know it works. So sometimes it's good to have a printer like that. I'm really hoping Prusa comes out with some type of mid-range printer, like their MK3, but that can do ABS out of the box. It just, it makes so much more sense to have a printer like that. It really does. Hey, how's that feel? One feels a bit off. Fix it. it doesn't have to be perfect, especially with that bearing. But it does have the line up. Who thinks everything's going to be perfectly square the first time? That's way too tight. Oh boy, I'm causing it to turn different colors. That's uh, that's not good. Okay, I'll leave it. I'll leave it like that. The bamboo printer is 1500 with AMS. It is. So a Prusa around that price that can print ABS. Maybe not with an AMS, but just one that can print ABS. I think that would be a pretty enticing offer. Uh, Cause right now the, what's the XL selling for? What's the base price? Is it like 1500? Not 1500, um, uh, 3500? Or is that with all the mods? I know it's expensive. It's a beefy printer. Hey, Lost Sync. Solved a modded exhaust with carbon HEPA to vent the chamber, fumes after print. So I'm running, I'll be probably running Bento Box. So I don't know if I need an exhaust filter. It makes sense to have one. So like, you know, you run your main filter while you print and then when the print's done, you exhaust it, but then you don't really need to. You can just let it cool down naturally. So I don't know. Wow, this is... 
I should have not put the feet on because it's impossible to spin now, which is great, but not while I'm working on it. <laughs> I, I like literally can't slide the printer. It's it's stuck to the desk. The desk is a little bit grippy as is. 2K for um, unassembled. 2K. Okay. With a one tool head. Hmm. Yeah, so maybe like, uh, that's what the Prusa's selling. I don't know. What would you expect if Prusa launched a, the XL could print ABS, right? Right? Can it? Actually, can it? I haven't seen a top cover for it. Can it print ABS? That's a great question. I thought it could. Maybe, like, not out of the box, but can it? XL is not enclosed stock. Hey, Maker Viking, welcome on in. There you are. I was trying to pronounce those cables again. But I think we got it. So it's not enclosed stock. I mean, you don't need to be enclosed. Like, this isn't going to be enclosed until I get the panels in. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm intending to print ABS on there. That's the difference. ABS. So what would you pay for a single tool Prusa that can print ABS? Remember... You can build one of these kits yourself for around I don't know um, under two thousand definitely depending on what size you get but we're talking like the two fifty size so let's say no more than fifteen hundred for like a Prusa sized Voron equivalent you know, that's like the balls to the walls everything you probably build one for around 1200 and close maybe which is two thousand dollar XL in a cardboard box I know right? All right that still goes smooth 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 and smooth we're good <laughs> yeah right the the clone boron I mean you can right you're not gonna get the support that Prusa has though that's what I'm asking so, Prusa, if you had a Prusa-ish, like, let's say even a 2.4, I don't know, a 2.4, but Prusa size. And Prusa supported, a lot simpler. Just thought, because a lot of people, they want that experience. MK3 lack tables. Uh, well, it's it's still PETG, so you have to reprint all the parts to guarantee long-term use. I'm talking out of the box. Like, you get it, and it can print ABS out of the box with no additional stuff required. Yes, Prusa does have their enclosure, but still, I don't know. Um, would you guys print ABS on a PETG printer? Not sure if I would trust that a ton. I know a lot of people do. Looking for some longer zip ties now. Thought I had some. Love to find that bottom piece too. That'd be good. A ton of miscellaneous goodness. There's like. Oh, uh, I got any gas. Very miscellaneous. I wonder if one's gonna be enough for each side. Ugh. Maybe. Maybe not. I purchased sold a 215 clothes quartz white printer. They went put bamboo out of business. For 1500 
Like, we're talking about reliability and... And serviceability. That's another big thing. So regardless of the reliability of the printer, what's the serviceability? Like, do you want to be able to replace your own bearings on your printer? See, is one going to be enough? Well, that puts it pretty high. I think we need two zip ties per side. Two of the long ones. Get some more. I have some outside, but I'm not going outside. It's too cold. It's freezing out. Just kidding, it's all the way into the garage. I'm not walking way out there. I'm walking here. I have a lot of the mini ones. That's not helpful. But I have a pack. Specifically got a pack. Of long zip ties. Now. Somewhere. Somewhere. Well, I can say once this is done, I'll be starting my Death Racer printing parts for that. That'll be a blast. I can't wait to get that thing going and see how well it works. That'll be a unique experience for sure. Okay. Um, No, those are the small ones. Like, oh, zip ties, oh, they're tiny. I'm not gonna chain a thousand of the tiny ones together, will I? Gonna, we're gonna YOLO. You don't need enclosed printer to print ABS. It does help reduce warping. Okay. No, you don't, but trust me, it significantly helps significantly helps to have a enclosed printer. How the heck does this happen? Like I've tried printing stuff open air and you have to have the perfect conditions. ASA is better, but if you're doing a really big part, you almost have to have it enclosed. And yes, I know you don't have to, but still, still. I would strongly, strongly recommend having an enclosure. Or a printer designed to be enclosed in the first place. Like that's the biggest difference. If the MK3 could be enclosed and work reliably, AKA it had ABS parts, might be a bit better. Let's bring it out here. So right now I'm going to try to do some questionable stuff. You can absolutely print uh, ABS in the closure, make people done. Thousands of hours. Okay, all right. Fair enough. Wow, okay. Um, <laughs> so... Oh. Okay. That's not right. That's not right. Where's the front? Oh, I don't have it angled right. It's not angled right. Help. But still, it'd be nice to have a Prusa little mini Core XY that's pre-enclosed. I'll, I'll just say that. Maybe with like easy removable panels, magnetic panels. I can see that. You can print ABS parts for Prusa. You can. They're, all their parts are open, open source, so you can print them. Um, the issue is, well, not really issue, but. You can. You just gotta make sure you print them to scale and 
it's not as easy just printing out foreign parts because they're pre-scaled. You have to make sure your scaling is correct. All right, so we're gonna... Is that too short? No, oh, jeez. No, we can go higher. So we only have two zip ties. I need a fifth hand here. Um, let's somehow attach this zip tie to that zip tie. Wow. Um, okay. Here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> oh, I saw this coming. What do you zip ties when you have filament? Am I right? We need two. Actually, let's just slide this to the back. I have a two, two clip on it. Oh no. Oh no. I'm going to put one on nice up. Mentioned this should just be easy. Easy enough, yeah. You just have to do a little trial and error. Maybe it helps because of the design of Prusa's, how nothing's under high tension, which is the reason why you can get away with PETG, I'm assuming. Because nothing is really that much under tension, so you don't have the issues from PETG parts. I'm guessing. But even then, Rat Rig. What am I doing? Let me just install this. Rat Rig has. We don't even need the zip ties. Rat Rig has PETG parts by default. I, I don't, I don't know. It's very conflicting. You get like half people saying that it's fine and half people saying that it will definitely not work. But here's the fun part. We get to install some screws. Yes, I'm just using Polymaker filament to, to prop it up. Better than zip ties. We need, uh, let me go back to the manual. All right, so we need definitely some more M3 shims. Oh, I think we have extras. Oof, I don't know if we have that many. Um, I have some, definitely have some for the Rook. Where do those go though? Question. threes. Oh, um, in this bin. There we go. Oh, these are different. Okay. That should be fine. These are the slightly thicker, thicker shims. Washers or I think they're shims. I don't know. They're they're less precision. <laughs> M five by twenty five. M five by twenty five. Socket head. Okay. M five. By twenty five socket. Printers are acting weird. <laughs> like, oh, you're streaming? We're going to do some weird stuff. All it took was 0 0.01 squish extra on the simple floor. Maybe the fact it wasn't preheated. That's the thing. It definitely helps. So we need to do... Get this camera over here for this part. Assuming that it still is functional. 
we dropped it. Questionable. There we go. This needs to be slid up. Um, goes in the middle. So that's going to attach like this. And then I'm going to do one, two, three, three of those. No. No, we're going to put the, oh geez, um, put the screw in first, then these on, somehow. Okay, like that. There we go. That spaces it out, allows it to flex. Yeah. Just a, just a little bit of flex. That's all you need. And then screw this into here. Oh boy. Um, that's not ideal. How do you do that? Um. I should check if everything lines up first before. Oh, it's on. Good. Okay. I'm like taking it and twisting it and pushing it out and twisting it because you can't just infinitely twist it. So just till it's snug, that's all I'm doing. Then we should be in business. Neat. Yay. So that's going to allow just a little bit extra movement, just a little bit extra movement to hopefully help with any type of potential binding. That's all we did. That's all we did there. And that looks correct. So good job. Onward. This one. <laughs> Slide the printer. <laughs> so much heavier. Probably because I have almost four kilograms of filament on it too, but so put this through, hold in with the, this thing, everything's in the way, slide one, two, three, three of those, then hopefully everything's lined up on that end, and I gotta push it in. Take it out, push it in, take it out. Okay, getting it tight, snug, feels about right. Same thing on that side, I can just do it from the inside. Uh, maybe. I'm gonna bust out the turntable for this. I don't want to put the feet on. Hey, Bob. Oh, that was, that was Bob, okay. Uh, that's funny. I can't see like anything. I can barely read my text. But it's fun because everyone has different experiences with the same process. You can give a hundred people the same printer build and everyone's gonna experience different issues. Some will work perfectly, some will never work. Very interesting. Again. Not terribly happy with the Z joint, so I'm probably going to uh, reprint these later, just because those are like right in the window. I'll print them in the new filament once it comes in. I can print them on this printer. It already looks better than most printers out there. That's funny. 
I like, I think a huge portion of what makes this printer look so good is the frame color. It's very, it's one color and then the rest of it is just grayscale. Black, gray, dark gray. Okay, last, last side on, then we can attach the belts. I was hoping to do a self burner today. We'll work on it. Get as much done as possible. Why is this one not going in? But there's definitely still a lot to do on this printer. We have a full tool head, we have clicky, we have all the wiring. Cable chains, that stuff. But the end is in sight, which is weird because we're like halfway down the manual. I don't know why it's so long. It's, it, it scares me how much extra length there is when I don't feel like there's a lot more to do. This one does not. Seems off with this one. It seems off. So is it they grab the wrong size bolt maybe? It's possible. Feels like it's engaging too soon. That feels a lot longer than it needs to be. Let's see. Is it 25? It is. Why is that one so much different then? There's the three, three shims. There we go. Let me make sure I have the right size bolt before I put too much force onto it. How many hours am I into this build? Because I've done most of it on stream, a couple, maybe a couple hours off stream of just random stuff, getting ready, preparing, but half of that's mostly for streaming. Huh. I keep trying to go more. But I feel like the, the washers aren't getting compressed. Is that happening on all of them? Yeah, the washers are not getting pressed all the way. Is it because it's not squared? Hmm. <laughs> you replace your I can see. Oh, nice! You replaced your controller board. Sweet. New one working. I don't know why the old one wouldn't. Doesn't really make any sense to me, but whatever. Why would this one be slightly different? 
Like I completely torqued. I can't I can't go anymore. Don't even have another. What do you think? I'm sure that's not great for the the printer. Show you. I'd like to add another washer in there. So what I'm currently dealing with is this right here. Could be a combination of my printed part, which I plan on replacing. A thick cap. So that is all the way screwed in. And uh, there is still some, well, is there? Yeah, there's still some play here, see? So I should be using four washers or three? Because I think I'm just putting another washer in. Using that 25 millimeter. Like, I don't think I was supposed to have one on the other side. It doesn't look like it. And it does look like three. Is it all going to the roll nut? Yeah, yeah, it's in there. It's in there. Like, no other place for it to go. Everything else looks the same as the other sides. Like, those sides seem to be screwed on fine. So I'm guessing it could be the printed part. Doesn't look like it was printed very well. Try 20. Good. That's 5 millimeters. That's that's a lot. That's a lot. I feel like just added another washer, spacer. Should be fine. Maybe. Like 20 is like the exact same length as those two printed parts, so I'm gonna guess and say the best thing to do is just install another washer. Maybe that lined. Let's see if it even engages. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. It is. I think it's just biting into the plastic. We're not gonna. I'll just do the extra instead. Then maybe once I reprint this, it'll be better. Maybe. Probably. Okay.
So you have one more of these and be like one millimeter off. Like that's one millimeter less of travel height. I can deal with that. I can deal. Oh jeez, I'm gonna get these bearings out when I remove these. Will I be able to get them out or do I just have to buy new ones? I was thinking about that. Because this seems feasible to replace because you just unscrew two, well, five total things. Oh, I think that's why this mod is what it is. Because if you want to replace them, you just remove this one thing. And I don't know what the other set is, but I think it's a little more involved. I think that's the reasoning for this setup versus the other one. I think I don't know. There's reasonings. I just don't know the reasonings. That's better. Seems better. So it looks like there's a gap, but maybe that's just how it's screwed in. Okay, those are fine. So one was the best, at least temporary solution. All right, so that's that. Cool, we're almost ready to install the belts. I almost ready. I mean, we are ready. Okay. Extend idle layer. We did that already. There. It's at pretty much its topmost point. And then do the Z belts. Easy enough. <laughs> so we'll start with this corner since we're here. Oh, okay, no. I thought it came out. No, so that's in here. So, without twisting it, we need to come down, out front, under, and back up. I feel like I should just tip it on the side for this part, but that should be fine. This and this just goes through this little slot, hopefully. Like that. And then through the idler, idler. And then down. <laughs> we think we get enough belt. We got enough. Plenty. Plenty O belt. Then. We loosen these up because I had them way too tight. Slip two. Then we should be able to slide it through that piece. Do this. Okay, perfect. Except it's not actually on the, it's not on that bottom one, so I gotta make sure that it's actually on the pulley. Right now it's not, it's doing something weird. What is it doing? Oh, I have it wrong. I didn't put it through the right hole. Do I just use the other rail stopper to keep the gantry from falling? Um, that's a good point. <laughs> Good point. That's a very, very solid point. Hello again. Hello. I'm currently installing belts. I have, I kind of want this to slide over on its side and yeah, I'm considering doing what you just said to do, but we'll try it like this another time. Got to put the right hole this time. 
I had it in the wrong hole. It's a right hole in the wrong hole. Got to use the one closest to the pulley. Okay. Back up through this one. Up. Nine millimeter belts are so nice to work with. They just feel extra. If all you work with is six millimeter belts, it just feels extra firm. Feels legit. Okay, that's better. <laughs> Do that, and then push this back through this. Somehow, there we go. All right, now it should be on. Yeah, that's working. Is this the same thing from your previous live stream? By same thing, you mean same printer? Yes. That belt padding does not look correct though. Uh oh, why does that not look right? Close. This will be fine. I thought it was the belts need to stay consistent with the part. Apparently not. Apparently not. Okay. So what are we doing here? Are we just trying to get it kind of hand snug? Because that's about as tight as it'll go as is. Then just tighten that. Most people mostly tight. Yeah, I tried that. I didn't have enough zip ties, so we just used filament. <laughs> I am not like most people. So some filament spools or filament boxes, those work quite well. So we'll do this for now. And then keep going. Liz is posting links in chat. Once. Asking if I want to leave YouTube. Oh, the flexi peep? Yeah. <laughs> I like those. All right. And then it's repeat. <laughs> Heavy. It's like, uh, again, probably because of the filament spools. But Still, getting harder to move around, at least. Yeah, it's nice. You can see how much range this has in terms of movement. So that's good. I'm going to slide this belt back through. What has been the hardest thing so far about this build? I think keeping the, the printed parts organized. That's probably the hardest part. The actual assembly isn't bad. Slides through here. Ooh, that's nice. But all the pre pre build stuff, that's the hardest. Sourcing the parts and making sure you have all the right printed parts. I strongly suggest using some type of checklist and not just YOLOing it. And if you're doing mods, definitely print out the stock parts, but read the whole description from the mods. Maybe even write down exactly what you're doing and go through the manual, mark it up, download the manual, mark it up, and share or show yourself where you're actually going to be implementing those mods. Otherwise, you just might forget or might do a wrong step like I did and then realize they have to completely redo it. Just reassembling this right here. Going to pull it reasonably tight. There we go. Make sure that it's on the motor itself by seeing thing it spin. It's good. Okay. 
Okay, take off one of these. What's this too? All right, thank you, Liz. Thank you for the lurk. <laughs> Bang lurk. Go, that side is in. I see I do this one. Funky. And I will say it's nice to be able to print your own parts, but I think at some point, uh, I think it would be nice to have a printer like this, but with just Aluminum or metal parts just out of the gate Designed for aluminum not just a clone of this with aluminum, but Like the second something like that that's designed to be used with aluminum So it's gonna have a little bit of slack and that's fine obviously not this much we'll cut it I wonder how much tension it's gonna need But now this side should be able to hold itself up so let's go for this side. Make sure I print finished. Yes, it did. We can work on that next. Perfect timing. <laughs> Oof, not the prettiest, but. VZ bot. Yep. Yeah, I'm thinking like VZ bot. <clears throat> it just seems a lot. A lot nicer in terms of fit and finish and. A uh, better experience to build. Because some of these parts are just a little bit. Um, I could have printed them better, or you know, the the tolerance could have been a bit better on my part, etc. It's mostly on my end because I printed them on my random machines that can print ABS. But I don't have a Prusa. People like want to build these just to print parts for itself. It's kind of a catch-22 because you need one of these to print parts for itself. Um, but if the bamboo's print quality is any good, then that could be useful for printing these parts. Just haven't seen one up and close, and I've gotten kind of mixed 50/50 results on or feedback on the print quality. People who don't care obviously will say it's perfect. Uh, people who do care will say that the print quality is not acceptable. <laughs> so I will have to see when I when I get one. Okay, there we go. It'd be great to have a printer that's reasonable. Like this is my first real printer, if that makes any sense. I've had some random ones, like very random, like a Kaiwu, and I guess that's a real printer, but. Real good printer. Everything I buy, I buy for a specific reason. That's because it's interesting, not because it's good. And stuff that I can mod. Because that's where I have fun, is modding printers, not just taking a printer off the shelf and using it. I enjoy the modding process and the tinkering, even if it's not for the benefit of print quality. It's definitely fun to do. Printer forward parts if you can't print ABS. Yes, you can. But, the downside is uh, mods. If you want to do specific mods, and maybe you don't realize that until after you start building it, then you can't. Unless you have your part provider print you more stuff, and then it's just kind of a pain. It seems like a pain, unless you're doing a complete bone stock build. Speaking of, these not. 
I'm going in all the way there. Did my bearing get so one? Bearing is fine. Thingy. But my rat. Okay. The Z axis has actually been more of a pain than I thought it would. For whatever reason. That's why you build it stock first, then print the mods and rebuild it. It's wasted. Yeah, you can. Certainly can. But I don't plan on completely rebuilding it. Like, trust me, once a printer works, you leave it alone. You never touch it. Ever. Don't touch it. Don't touch it till it breaks. Or unless you have printers that you can afford to lose sleep on. Let's see, why was this not going in? They're not lined up anymore. Lined up. Hmm. Very strange. Okay. That one more time. Maybe, I, I know what happened. I gotta start screwing it in, because it's actually screwing itself into the plastic. So I can't go down any further, because it's, it's too tight a fit on the printed part. Maybe these parts aren't scaled correctly, and that could be an issue. I feel like all Voron parts should be scaled pre-slicer to the standard Voron methodology, where they don't use the uh, the shrinkage factor in the slicer, which Orca Slicer just added. I'm very excited to be able to use that because I use the same printers for ABS and PLA. So it'd be nice to have both of them be able to print the same size parts with the same clearances without doing any extra fiddling. All right, yeah, that's all the issue, good. Fixes itself. Twisting. Melt the plastic. There go. Beautiful, except it's loose. I'll tighten it. Choice of M plus one printers. Yep. <laughs> that is quickly realized. But it'd be nice to have printers that you don't have to use that methodology for. Like, that's the issue. The issue is that that's the go-to is uh, printer. Just have an extra one. <laughs> you shouldn't have to have... Your printer shouldn't be failing and breaking that often. Unless you're modding, that's a different story, but just stock. Printers shouldn't be having this much maintenance. What do you guys think? Should 3D printers be more expensive? And better overall? Or do you think the low barrier to entry is good for 3D printing because you get more people into it? Printer is waiting on you. This one? This one's done. <laughs> I'm not super happy with the quality. It's using that weird Triangle Labs STD6. Uh, it's interesting. Buy printers because you want more, not because of printer failures. Right, that should be that should be the methodology. But the fact that you have to recommend oh if you're gonna, you know, buy this printer, you should probably get like another one too, because you'll have to print parts for it because it'll fail. I feel like that's too common. But of course, if you want more printers then 
buy him. It's always nice to have two anyway, in case you want to print two things at the same time. Like, sometimes the situation where you want to print two things at once. Imagine there's still people that they wake up and they have to ask, what am I going to print? I have nothing to print. Like they don't have a backlog, they don't have a catalog, they don't have projects, nothing. They, they don't know what to print. Wow. Wish I had that problem. Too much stuff to print. There's so much stuff to print that I forget what I'm supposed to be printing. Next. Next, besides printers, non-printer stuff, the Death Bracer is on the top of my priority list. Get that up and running and actually play around with it and learn how it works before competing. And I have to get my Rook rebuilt and working well. To take that with me. Studio work, as always. Important to keep low barriers. People can test it and see if it's for them. More sensitive kits and pre-built printers already exist. Um, yeah, partially. Too low barrier of entry means that people are just buying printers and then either they have no idea how to use them and they put them in the a closet and they'll never use them ever again or <laughs> jeez <laughs> okay this is definitely good or it breaks because they either did something that they weren't supposed to and the printer is easy easily breakable or the printer is just junk and it breaks or you can't figure out how to tune it because it doesn't have great tuning built in Correct device immediately print spares for anything else. That's that's a good idea. Always have spare parts. <laughs> stuff that you can't just reprint. Or stuff that you can't fix without reprinting. Like tool heads. Never a bad idea. Alright. This is installed. It's very much not square, but whatever. It doesn't need to be. Well, it actually will. So, big question. How much, am, how much am I cutting off? Because I can just bend up as much as I don't need. And let's bring this up to max travel. Uh, I'm taking off these things because those are not needed now. It is not going anywhere. Uh, I think these motors are extra torquey. I don't know a standard, standard motor fares, but I can lift up the printer by the gantry. Like it's not. Four gear reduced motors. Oh, jeez. I actually. How do I move this thing up? It's probably a bit combination of racked and high torque. I'll do that one more time. Oh my god. Meanwhile, the simple core, three motors, direct belted Z, no gear reduction. Uh, gantry probably weighs more, or the bed. All right, how high? I can still go a lot higher than this. How high can I go before I run out of rail? That'd be about here. It is pretty cool though. The fact that I can kind of like do this and it's still perfectly fine. See, see what's going on here? That's all due to that mod. It has a little bit of flex probably by default, but it just isn't breaking itself. I don't want to run out of rail. Yeah, that's the max. That's the max. That's the max. And that's the max. All right, that's the max we can go. Right there. So, it's probably going to flip around like this and then just zip tie. I don't know what the official cable management is. 
I don't think there is an official cable management or belt management. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna cut it to about here, and then we're gonna zip tie the remaining because that gives us plenty, plenty more belt than we need, but enough so that it stays managed. Seem good? Good. So about that much. I hate cutting belts so much. PTSD is like cutting it and then realizing that I built it wrong and I have to redo the belt or I missed a bearing and that's okay. Just be confident. I'm confident that this is the correct move. Cutting belts is always correct. Now, that does not look lined up. That does not look lined up. Is it not lined up? <laughs> Lots to play around with all the all the alignment too. But that seems good enough, and then we're just gonna do a quick zip tie. Um, I'll lower this down. Okay. And then I'm gonna zip tie. Yeah, it is still heavy without the filament. Not just me. Hey, I can build a printer out of this. This is enough enough cable for a Core XY little mini printer. There's you will max that around 260 dual two tool head cable chains. Yeah, yeah. I I just want to see how much I have in general. Just in case I had to go all the way up. But I know it's not going to go that high. Which is a shame. <laughs> a printer not designed to utilize its max rail capacity? Dang. Um, yeah, that's what I was... That's the first thing I did. Is I, I wrapped around a printed part incorrectly. Uh, but they all look fine now, and they move pretty smooth. But I think just this one side, maybe my my bearing isn't... Wait, is that going to fall off? Wait, align correctly. Eh, yeah, should be fine. Should be good. And then I'm going to take this and then zip tie it onto this, like so. Could have left a little longer, but I'm just gonna do this. Of course, we'll do a lot more testing with this before we even attempt to print with it. But we'll do this. Kind of like... For Z belt clip mods. Oh yeah, there's probably a belt clip that... That, uh... That it clips on. That would make sense. Just like a little printed part. That's what I had in the brook. I had a little, uh... Like a little thing that slides over. A zip tie will be fine for now. I cut them probably a little, a little shorter than I, I should have, as always. <laughs> always the case, right? Clamp looks down wrong. It's not down the way. Uh, that one, yeah, I can go down a little more. Um, the issue is that the, these printed parts were too tight. So the screw is getting caught on that top section. But it's... It'll be good enough and I can fix it later if I have to. But it's secured. Hold extra belt. Oh, I see. Yeah, it wants you... Actually, it has it right in here. 
but it was small zip tie. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, it has a lot more. <sighs> it's okay. I like short belts. It's not a... It's not a zombie hedgehog printer if your belts aren't cut too short. like a real printer well done thank you thank you yeah that's what i'm saying like it looks like it's nearly done i know there's a lot more but it's getting there it's been fun and i like that you guys are here to <laughs> catch my mistakes that's always fun. Or provide answers that I just don't know. I would not want to do this solo. And can I assure you that I would not be either. I'd be in a... In a Discord chat, like, with someone, like, please, I need help. Help me. Uh... This is just more of a, I don't know what you'd call it, but um, it's more complete of a printer than the other ones I've built. But it's clearly had many, many hours being developed. Aluminum parts, yeah. Uh, square in the gantry, oh geez. Um, Move the gantry all the way back until it hits the A, B drive on both sides. Shouldn't I, like, should I line this at all somehow? <laughs> it, eyeball it, I guess. I feel like I want to have it squared to the frame. Here, we'll use the, the one, two, three block. Before squaring everything. And not yet. Not yet. Missing one very important thing. And that is uh, this. We gotta get this installed. So let's do the heat set for that real quick. Uh, unscrew this one. Okay. Looks like this is two on the top. Three for this one. Finally, I get to use my heat set. My soldering iron. Use a ruler? Nah. <laughs> Rule is overrated. Did you confirm that all the Z-belts were the same length? Ah, it doesn't really matter. I did. I did measure them, but... You're gonna tension them anyway, so it doesn't necessarily matter. It helps. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> not, it's not critical. But it'll be fun to do belt tensioning on a quad, quad belted Z printer. Oh boy, that's gonna be fun. At least I can use one of the handy cheat sheets. That's where I was supposed to press these in. Bit late. Uh, no giveaways for these streams. Uh, but yeah, thanks for asking. That's all right. We're we're having fun. We're currently about to install this thing again. 
I go the overhead now? I can. Yay. It's not as reflective. So I'm going to install the correct one of these for my belt or my cable chain. These. I'm glad I got the three millimeter version of this. It's been very helpful. Okay, so everything is in loose. So this gantry can do that. It can rack. So we have to square it. Move the gantry all the way to the back until it hits the AB drives. You may need to adjust this between AB to square the gantry. Okay. Let's see. I mean, it does move pretty smooth. That's good. I don't feel any resistance. So is it designed to square up? Where is it? Oh, damn it. Whatever. Eee. <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> uh, get back in there. Maybe a little too loose. There is a test script to repeatedly probe the four corners. Help you set equal tension. Really? Huh. Feels like it's just a little off. That's oh, just me. Okay, so we're getting this squared up against that rear extrusion and then tighten it up. Remove zip ties. Ha! Never used them. It's all relative. Get these aligned, so this is going to make our gantry belting a little bit easier. Wow, we even put the belts on. Oh my god. Ah, quick build today, he says. We'll get it printing today. Bottom one can be tightened up as well. It's one. Okay, so smooth, cool, wow, perfect, exactly what I want to see. No adjustments needed. Let's continue. AB belts, yay! The Voron belt path, this is a new one for me. Or on belt path. I'm currently using the uh, whatever Eva tool heads use. I don't know if it's a rat rig, BZ bot tool path. I don't know, whatever that one is. Equal belt tension is important. Yep. Yep, equal lengths. Sure. Oh, geez. How long do we need to get these ones? I'm not cutting that entire thing in half. I mean, I could. It doesn't matter. I could. Find it. <laughs> Just... You guys see the Clipper start info generator that just released the beta. Uh, from who? No. Alright, yeah, it's, I mean... I gotta fix all my macros there. Some of them are questionable. <laughs> Dulling it from random places and they mostly work. All 
All right, that's a bunch of belts. But it's important to start equal lengths. You trim them, make sure they're still equal. Yeah, it just feels like, oh, I don't want to cut this in half. But I guess this is all I really need. All right, going for it. Done. We run out. That's just quiet. That, thank you, thank you. I'll take a look at that when I am more of a human. Alright, so we are getting the same length of belt by folding it over and then doing this and cutting it halfway. It's approximately the same length. It needs to be nearly this long, but it'll still needs to be pretty long. More belt than I will ever need in my life. All right. Get some links in chat. Ah, oh, that's fine. That's fine. I do have some experience doing Torx by belt pathing, at least. So that's good. Just not this one. This one's a bit odd. <laughs> it's it's complex. It's not simple. Eleven. Oh, yeah, add an hour to that. <laughs> uh, we are determined to get this done. So. Are we just yellow yet? <laughs> I guess so. All right, yolo. I'm just gonna start where the tool head would go, and then work our way around. <sighs> The question is, do the belts, which way do the belts face? Teeth out or teeth in? I'm guessing teeth out. Like this? Yeah, it must be. Because otherwise it wouldn't have a tooth idler. So teeth facing out. Oh, you never get to see nice gates. Logo. Um, oh wow, this is gonna be fun. So, <laughs> uh, uh, what? Yeah, so the that, that belt is in there. So I'm just gonna push it out maybe and then push it back. Wow. Hmm. I think we're at the start of this one. How the heck are you supposed to run this? So I'm going to start by running it through this. It's gotta be, because it, otherwise it's very difficult to get it around that bend. And then pull it out. See what I'm doing, but that's okay. So we're going like this, this way. I can get an overhead shot of it. And move some stuff around. So I'm starting by coming in here, coming out the side, and then pushing it back through the idler. Um, actually, I'm gonna, there we go, I can push it up a bit too. That helps it clear. Okay, that's much easier. There we go, much easier. So getting it above the rail allows me to do this. And let's see if I run into any other difficulties. Because sometimes it's better to run it in one direction versus another. So much built. 
this then goes around here. Maybe. <laughs> and a bit's a little bit twisted. Not ideal. Alright. That up. Okay. Good enough to me. It seems like you're missing your carriage there. Yeah, we're gonna run the belts first. And then attach them to the carriage. That doesn't exist. I don't know, I always run the belts first. Okay, so it's gonna go on the the bottom. This one gets attached to the motor. Belt is very bendy at the end, it's like very twisty. Should cut off more. Go, pull it all the way through. Okay. And then into the motor. Oh yeah, this isn't too bad. There's plenty of space to run the belts. Not bad at all. Looks a lot more daunting. And it goes in the bottom. Oh, I can see someone who's never done this before. It, yeah, that might not be the easiest thing. Or the most, like, it's easy, but it's just not straightforward. Kind of like playing one of those mazes. But uh, I do appreciate having all these open access holes. It makes running this far, far easier than having a completely closed part. So starting with those front eye layers, that's probably your best bet. And I can see the rest of it being easy enough to run. Okay, so on the motor. I need to run this all the way to the back and on the bottom one. Want to see you struggle while you do your trident to hunt issues? Uh, are they similar? Are they like the same belt path? Because these printers are neat. They take the, the motor and they put it at the rear but then they tension it using a set of uh, two additional sets of idlers instead of having the motor in the front. So it adds a little more complexity, but definitely looks a lot cleaner. Okay, then this goes like this. Hopefully you can see some of it, but I mean... Not really much to, to see. I'll show you a specific part on the handheld. Oh yeah. <laughs> a slight bit of extra belt here. All wheel drive is super complicated. Ah, it's not gonna be too much worse because all you're doing is replacing this front idler with another motor. That's it. Right. Uh, tensioning. I don't know, who knows, but that's that in theory that's all it is, is just you add another motor that drives this idler. It's pretty cool. Oh uh, yeah, so all I'm gonna do is just like I'll take this and then I'll cut off a bunch and then I'll take that same amount and cut it on the other one. Ugh. So much belts. The worst part is, though, is that you can't really, like, this isn't going to be usable. Maybe I can use it for a rook or something, but it's not enough for this printer. So you get extra belt that you're essentially, most people are just going to waste. 
which is a shame. Let's show you what I did here on the webcam. If I can. Oh, I can actually use this for some of these printers. Um, yeah, some of these nine mil or six millimeter belt printers. I could probably replace some of the the belts with these Gates belts. So, okay, not un unusable. You don't do speed prints. It's all about flow. Hey, I'm not even, not even reading the guide. <laughs> so here, take a look. So for these, what I did was where is the idler? Uh, what are you doing? Oh, it's at the front. This autofocus, hello. Yeah, you don't get autofocus, but maybe you can't even focus in this close. Eh, you get the point. All right, so for this right here, I am taking the belt, the belt faces like this, and I am going to shove it into here and then lift this up enough. Hey, that focuses so that it's able to clear the rail, slide it through. I can't see under the now. Yeah, slide it through, and then use a screwdriver to push it out. Maybe. Get it. See what I'm doing for a second? Okay. Yeah, take a screwdriver, grab it, bring it out. Now it's out. And then once it's out, then you can push it straight straight through into here so just straight through into there and then push it back there you go easy enough so it feels like it's rubbing on something what is it rubbing on Not really, never. Hey, welcome in. Love the new idlers. The new idlers. What do you mean by that? Oh, it's in the extrusion. That's why. That'll do it. Make sure your belt is not in the extrusion. And then we're good. They are slim in the right. Slip. Slim. Oh, oh, you mean the uh, Ramas, Ramas idlers? Yeah, they seem to work well enough. They seem good. And I did print out the covers too. Do I have any more magnets? But they they have this neat little cover. I'm gonna reprint this. It didn't come out very good, but. They have a little cover that goes on them. That look pretty neat. And they are pretty slim, huh? So take this and then put this where it goes. Put it around here. And this one.
here. These belts are just so long, Bob. Like, crazy. In fact, I'm just gonna cut. I'm gonna cut some off because it's just so much. So I'm gonna leave myself a little bit of slack. And then cut off the rest, making sure that it still moves free-ish. We can tighten it a lot. So let's take off about I mean, a carriage width is probably enough. There's no point in leaving it super, super long. But how long would you... How much extra would you leave for slack? About this much. Ish. Let me get these on first so I can make sure that I have enough. Once you run the belts and then, oh, it's a lot of heat sets. See what lets us splurge on for next polymaker code. I don't know. I mean, there's so much stuff now. Uh, it's hard. Let's do it. Half inch. Well, I don't know how much extra that is, but like if the belt is lined up like this, it's going to come forward. So I'll give it about like a carriage length extra. And that should be good because we can still tension it. And that should be fine. So we'll do that. And then I can take this ridiculously long belt and then cut off that same amount. Tricolor. I don't know if they have the machine to do tricolor. That's the issue. I don't think they have the extruder. But maybe in the future. I think they have some fun stuff coming in the near future. Maybe. I'm just cutting off an equal amount, so I have two equal lengths. That's a pretty good length. But pretty good. That can probably be enough for like a rook. Or even yeah, it's enough for most printers, like a 300 millimeter printer. So that's not bad. Two extra belts for two different printers. I take that back what I said. It's a decently useful enough amount. If you cut them to the right size to begin with, and not leave like an, a bit of extra slack. You said like a year after dual. Yeah, it seems about right. You gotta see how dual works. Ah, but these ones are this is this is absolutely probably useless. Uh something. Use it for something. Let's toss it. Okay. On to the belting. Go around to the rear. There you go. It's a good view. Okay, so this is going to go through here on the top. So we're working on the top now. It's a lot easier to work with with smaller belts, shorter belts. Metallic blue and red look like. Ooh. I think I ordered the red, so we'll see. If you're waiting on metallic blue and it's not in stock, take a look at the dark blue PLA. Dark blue PLA. Oh, and I don't know if it's still in stock, but if there's any Bamboo or MMU users out there, uh, Poly support for PLA is back in stock. This one's a bit odd. Let's see, screwdriver and kind of force it in. There you go. Easy enough. Okay. 
looks good. Bring around to this side. Through this side layer. Okay, we're almost done with the belts. Good. Almost need a turntable. I'm very tempted <laughs> to go grab it. Because I can't just slide it around anymore. It's grippy. Turns out when you put feet on a printer, it makes it grippy. <laughs> Imagine that. All right, that's in, perfect. All right, and all our belts are belted, except for this part. Are we gonna confirm by making sure those are the same length as those? They're a little off. Uh, Cause this is not correct. This has to go through here. There we go. Right now. Should be roughly the same. Plus or minus probably one tooth. Yeah. Looks pretty good to me. How do I, how do I core spot? Um, these are both rigid mounted to here. Trying to get one finger on both sets of belts. That's proving to be a challenge. I'm gonna do this, twist it. Okay, that, and then like this. Let's make sure that it's able to move correctly before we put anything else on. All right. It's correct. See that one? Both motors are spinning. Don't go diagonal. Just want to be spinning. And in this direction, just one. So. Feels good. And now it's time for the, this part. Yay. Yeah, we had a fun time installing the gantry. It wasn't terrible, but uh, we ran into a few, not snags, but just random things that I just didn't know because I haven't done before. So it's been fun. I think we're going to do a little bit more while I still can. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stream tomorrow. Maybe a short stream. Figure out something to do. Maybe we'll just focus on the tool head tomorrow. We are at this point right here where we're doing heat sets. So let's put some heat sets on. Looks like we need them here. I think I have some glue to clean up too. Gotta use our new heat gun method. Okay, so one there. And then. One on this side. Where? Here. And then nuts. 
interestingly enough. Nuts. I don't think this kit came with any nuts. Which is interesting as well. No nuts. I got plenty though. Stealth Burner is really the weak point. Uh, I know, I know. The Stealth Burner at this point is just for looks. It always has been. This is a ABS printer in terms of where it excels. But we'll do some PLA printing on it, just a little slower. Um, I installed the wrong fan at first. I had this standard GDS time, but I have since realized <laughs> and soldered on a Delta. So it's like probably the best possible performance we're gonna get out of this tool head. Interested in a replacement? Um, the Mantis, Mantis tool head. That's your best option, probably. Dual 5015s. It's not bad, what I've heard. Also looks like we need this part right here. Just gets two heat sets. It's like, it's all heat set and like partially plastic. Okay. But I've never used the Delta. 5015. That'll be fun. I'm just gonna go with one fan. Ah, uh, it's gotta be a good one. Because you can always dial back a fan, right? You can always reduce the RPM, but you can never give it more. Okay. Technically, you can. If you take a 12 volt fan and you run it at 24 volts, you can get more power out of it. This probably won't last as long. Okay. Those two are in. Hi, good luck with the self burner and PLA. Uh, I, I, some people have, it depends on what fan you get, I guess. Because PLA performance is all going to be based off of cooling. For the most part, for going fast. Uh, if you get high flow and print it colder, maybe you can get better performance. Xbox, dual fan, 18 volts. <laughs> Is that those really big, like the 120 blowers? Because I have, I've used those on Rook. Alright, cheers Bert! Bob. Next step. For this is to do a M3 by 12. Nuts. Do these hold together? No, they don't. Where did that even come from? Here. Okay. M3 by 12. I don't know if I've used that size yet. I'm just trying to use what comes in the kit. Make it easier myself. Not blower, just dual 80. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, those are, those are insane. Little too insane for me. Okay, so we have 12 now to work with. Oh, you have five volts? Oh, geez, yeah. That's funny. I guess it all depends on how hot it gets. I don't know. Fans are weird. So what goes on with this? Why is the Oh, okay. So this is used as a capture. Capture, not... Essentially the lower part of... The hot end is going to index into here. In fact, I should bring that out and just use that. So this part right here, I built quite a few of these, is going to lock into here. And that's what holds it in place. So you can kind of cheat and use that as a spacer to make sure it fits well without measuring. I'm going to 
Open Sauce Con. I don't think I've ever heard of that, to be honest. Sounds interesting. Screwed on. Feels about good. Just doing it by feel. I need to measure. Okay. Good enough for me. Maybe a little tighter. Yeah, good enough. Here's your con. Cal. Replaced by uh, Bay Area, I think, right there. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm in Maine, so very, very opposite side of the side of the states. So I'll be at the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival when that comes out. That'll be fun. Cool, now we can start doing our belts. So this we need to over here. How you guys like my camera work? Do you like this little camera? It's a bit better than like a little mini tripod because it can go up pretty substantially. Kind of miss Rocky Mountain. Oh no. Uh, I call them scallops. I know they're also called scallops, but I call them scallops. <laughs> Am I going to be canceled? Is that very wrong? Oh no. <laughs> I'm being cancelled, guys. Rip. What the heck is this? Okay. We need two M3 by eights. Okay. Lots of those. You have a question? If you know what model I'm talking about, there's a man with a jacket that had the details and the buttons. I do not. Have I printed it? Man, a jacket had details and, and the buttons. I don't recall. Interesting answer from a main native. Why? Should I be? Should I call them scallops or scallops? Scallop, 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 scoop, scoop. I don't. I don't eat them. They're good, but I don't eat seafood that much. Not like fancy seafood like that. Rolo has? Oh. You heard it the other way. I... Just because I live in Maine doesn't mean I speak Maine. Just because I'm French doesn't mean I'm French. You know what I mean? So how does this work? Okay, so these kind of clip in. How much am I giving this? I feel like it doesn't need much. Like, how much extra? Am I going to try to flush this up to the front? Like that? Like that? We give it a little extra? Let's give it two teeth extra. I guess as long as it's the same, it doesn't matter. Same. Here. Okay, looks good to me. Is that even lined up? Okay, something like that, yeah. Couple teeth, yeah. Cool. Your friend's not food. Uh, every time we go to the store, we always stop by lobster tanks. My kid can look at the lobster. <laughs> it's like this 
discount aquarium. <laughs> oh, foil officers. All right, uh, I could take these belts, get them all nice and oh well. Well, one way it's gonna come off. Yeah, so these are still too long. So let's uh, let's put them in. Oh god, I'm losing my nuts. Why nuts? <laughs> Come on, you're doing so good. So good with the heat sets. And you had to throw in some M3 nuts. Ah. Who designed Stealth Burner? Who designed the completely out front of the gantry tool head? I miss my Eva. <laughs> Apparently there's an Eva for Boron. <laughs> I'm very tempted. Although I think it's just a single fan, so it wouldn't be that good. If I make a scientist... Oh, the Polymaker Scientist? Buttons in the front? Is this guy? Is that what you want? Him? Missing heat sets as the clockwork screw in from the back. Um, I have no idea. There's some holes that screw in. No, those are for the... Am I missing heat sets? That's a good question. Did it tell me to put heat sets on there? I don't think so. It didn't tell me to put them in. Yeah, it didn't tell me. Afterburner. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I think these mounts are the same, though. Um. There we go. Aha! <laughs> you are 1,000% correct. Look at that. See? This is why I like chat. But luckily I can just throw it in. Perfect. I'll just do it on this one. While it's on the ground. Yes, yes, thank you. See? That's why I have you around. I wouldn't have gotten very far, though. Like, hmm, this looks completely different. I think so far it's been the same. Still those stupid M3 nuts. Keep falling out. I want to get that attached just so I can... Stop coming out. Okay. Yeah, we did the belt pathing. Could have been unfortunate. Oh, it's not. Actually, you know what? It could have been unfortunate because I could have gone. No, there's not, Phil. I could have gone through the whole thing and then gone to assemble it. And then I had to disassemble it just to find out that there wasn't a heat set there. I always miss heat sets. I'm just going for it. Okay, so, these two, pull them tight, to the same-ish length, and then this just gets pressed up. I'm losing my marbles. More specifically, my M3 nuts, but same, same general idea. Marbles, nuts, same thing. Screw that in. Let's get a little bit to get it in place. Make sure that our belts are still the same length. They are, so we haven't lost anything there. 
Um, the overall belts are not very tight. So let me, I'm going to tension it, but I'm going to get it a little more tight. Maybe like another click. Maybe. Can I? Oh, it's like on there pretty good. Okay, that's not bad. Good design. One click. That's a better starting point. Trying to reduce the amount of tensioning I'm going to need. Oh, whoops. Um, one major issue. Don't get the sides there. You have three instead of heat sets. Yeah, I know, right? Um, my, my belts are behind this one. Oops. So I gotta remove this. So I'm like, have, I have a belt on top of a belt. Not ideal. Okay, let's just get you out of the way. Much better. Almost whatever for yeah for the for the Voron. How many fans does it have? Because the only reason you'd want to go with it, well, one of the main reasons besides easy to swap components and more compatibility is the fans. The fact that it has two fans instead of one. Mantis is okay. It's a little interesting looking, but it's seems okay from what I've seen. Is this upside down? No, it can't be. We had it wrong. This actually goes in like like this. Okay. <laughs> wrong my brain. So these belts are both the same length. We're gonna trim them. Same as the others. Because it doesn't matter now. And we're done. That's it. That's the mount. So I'm gonna finish torquing these. Then we can do a real test to see how smooth the motion system is, as is. So first thing we do is slide it back and forth. Make sure it feels smooth. Feels pretty dang smooth. And back and forth. Pretty dang smooth. Uh, diagonal. Feels fine. Other diagonal. Feels fine to me. And this can slide on there. Confirmed. We need to loosen it all. Probably a little tight. Uh, actually, no. Oh, shoot. That really screwed the plastic. All right, I'm going to stop touching that. <laughs> Alright. You can put PLA in this printer, just not as fast. Not as fast, which is a shame, but that's okay. So this is how far we got. We got some miscellaneous tool head parts. We'll do that next stream. If I can set that up for tomorrow, we'll get that done. Otherwise, Tuesday. I'm just going to keep working on this over and over and over and over again until we get it done. And I might do some stuff off camera too. So don't be afraid if I come back and then all the drag chain is installed, for example. Because I'd like to get this done as quick as possible. But share as much as I can as I go with the process. So, yeah, it's been... 
been pretty good so far. It seems like it's working. We get the, the gantry. Is able to move with quite <laughs> significant force, but not in too significant. I think the correct significant amount of force. Ugh, I don't like how it racks though. <laughs> it's, it doesn't feel right. I know it can, but like I don't like it. Um, this goes smooth. Feels pretty good. We still got to tension it. It's gonna need some amount of tension. It's still a little loose, so we'll. We'll get that correct. We got the panel in temporarily while I search for the the missing mount. It's somewhere. It's gotta be somewhere. Other than that, yeah, so expect a stream for the tool head. And then we'll start working on the cable chain. Once we get the tool head installed, we can do the the wiring and that's gonna be pretty much it for the top part and then we'll have the bed and then the bottom wiring anything else oh clicky clicky is gonna be an adventure yeah that's, that's an adventure yes for another day <laughs> that is not for today but i like how it looks with the black it's like good. so thank you guys all for tuning in thanks to west 3d for providing components for this build Thanks to LTO for providing components for the build. Thanks to Polymaker for providing filament for the build. What size? This is a 300. It's a 300. Uh, if, to me, this is the perfect size printer. It really is. 250? It's great and you can do most stuff on it, but you can print something that's 250 on this printer and probably get better results because if you print closer to the middle of the bed, the heat, the heat is more even, and you'll have um, better chances of, if you're printing ABS, uh, lower warping. You have two 350s. Yeah, an extra 50. Uh, I think just on this side, but probably a bit much. I have my simple core. That's already big enough. I don't know if I would. If I had a 350, it'd probably be a Trident. I think I'm gonna skip it and go right for like a, a 410 keyboard or something like, you know, big. If I can't get through the door anyway, might as well go big and more practical. Um, but this will be plenty, plenty for pretty much everything that I need to print with or everything they'll ever need to print for now. And they have the slightly bigger simple core that we can also do some stuff with. I'm gonna rebuild that once this is done, but I'm, I'm focusing on this, and this is going to be my primary printer. So this is going to sit probably just in the corner or something, and it's going to do most of my reliable printing. So once it's set up, no major mods, no tinkering, no tuning, just, well, tuning, yes, but let's get working. You have a, a 350v2. Everyone that I've heard that has a 350 is like, I'm never using this build volume. So take that as you will. Um, and then, of course, with the with the 300, you can still print stuff that's this size. This is a 280, so that's that's a pretty good size. And a sneak peek for my Plinko board. I want to see how it shows up on camera. A little bit of issue. I'm gonna probably end up reprinting it, but yeah, that's a uh, one part of the board I designed. Just a quick quick design. It's actually a little smaller than I thought, but oh well. That was printed? Yeah, it's printed this. Uh, not not great, but this is Polymaker's Draft PLA and then the uh, PLA Plus. That's on the, the bed slinger with the not very flat bed. You can see on the bottom, like, oh man, that is... Oof. That was CNC'd? <laughs> yeah, it's a little flexy. So I might actually make this thicker too. We'll see. I have bracing. Met the rate occurrences when you actually need it's nice to have. Well, yes, yes, exactly. Like <laughs> I have a car that can go up to a hundred miles an hour. Am I ever gonna go that fast? No. But if I'm speeding to the hospital, 
yeah, it's nice to have. So yeah, 300, good. 300 is a good size. I've been using a 300 printer, multiple 300 printers for a bit now, and they're good. I just pre-ordered the SV06 Plus. That's a 300. It's kind of the sweet spot if you have the space. Otherwise, I like 180. 180 is a great size for a printer. Uh, KP3S, Prusa Mini, um, any of the other smaller printers. I'd love a 180 Core XY. That's that's the sweet spot, in my opinion. I saw your sample number. Uh, yeah, you have to plan for it though. So, once again, I think we made pretty good progress today. I'm happy with where we're leaving off. I'm gonna shut off my soldering iron before we go to bed this time. Micron, I know, Micron is 180. So, if you like this build and you want to see it smaller, let me know in the comments and we could try to work something out. Or, if you want a little mini printer that can like fold up into a box, maybe we can work something out with that. Uh, otherwise than that, have a great night. Make sure to like and subscribe. I know you right there. I'm talking to you. You liked the video. And you watched... How many hours is this? How many hours have I been streaming for? Too many. Too many hours. I can't even find my browser tab because I got too much stuff open. Um, where is my browser? <laughs> how long are you streaming for? My thing doesn't tell me. Too long. Too long. But you've been watching for like almost five hours. Actually, here we are. Yeah, almost five hours. And you hit the like button. And you either fell asleep, which is fine, I understand. Uh, or you just forgot. So I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for the subscribe. We're close to our 1K goal. We're getting there. Try and do more streaming on YouTube to build up this platform and work on the whole Hedgehog makes stuffs. Too busy watching. I know, I always forget to. But now's a good time. And hopefully this will be a good reference for anyone trying to build a B2 in the future. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer. If not, you can always hit up the Roar on Discord. There's a B2 channel. Um, there is a West 3D channel on there as well. Uh, the Polymaker Discord is a great place to get reference information and ask people who've been involved in the custom printer community. Lots of good places to go get support, so you'll find something. I'm excited to get this finished. And have a great night. Bye. Make sure to tune in. March 25th, next week, one Saturday on Twitch. Massive, massive giveaways. Seriously, there's like way too many. Please show up so we can get some stuff for free. All right. Bye.